New Image Media presents the NFHS Game of the Week. Brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Big city deals from a dealer with a hometown feel. It's my favorite time of the year. Football is back. I would like to personally invite you to come down for your next new or pre-owned vehicle purchase. With one of the largest new and pre-owned inventories in the area, come see us today for discounts that the competition simply can't match or beat. If you drive in Sanford, why not buy in Sanford? Come see me, the deal maker. Come and get that big town deal with that small town feel right here at Crossroads Ford in Sanford. Welcome to a beautiful night in Union Pines here in Cameron, North Carolina. The kickoff by the Southern League Cavaliers, fielded by the Union Pines Vikings. Archie Chandler on the return, brings it out across the 25. 26-yard line. We got an early block in the back there on the 21-yard line. Looks like that'll be coming back, marching the Vikings back deep into their own territory to start this first drive. All right, I've been talking about this game all week, Nate. Um, this may be when it's all said and done, the biggest game of the year in the Tri-County Six Conference. Absolutely. Um, Lee County seems to be out head and shoulders above the rest of the uh, conference. But this, I think every all of the observers would agree, are the second and third best team in the conference. Absolutely. I think that's fair to say. Absolutely. With, uh, you know, there for a while, Hornet Central was in the discussion about maybe vying for a, for a third place spot in the conference. After their lackluster performance against Western Hornet last week, I uh, think it's fair to say now, right now, this is a competition for the second best in the conference. All right. Senior quarterback Rory Board leads the offense out onto the field. And Teixeira, number two, getting the start at tailback tonight in place of the injured Tyreek McCoy. McCoy can't buy a break this year. Nah, sure can't. On that tackle was number 44, Mr. John Wilson. Sophomore linebacker, this defensive staff there at Southern Lee is really high on on, uh, on Mr. Wilson there. You know, high school football coaches love to heap praise on their players. The smiles that come across the, <laughs> st the staff's faces when you, when they talk about uh, Mr. Wilson or something else. Board drops, looking right, has a man reeled in at the 20, close to a first down. It's going to bring up third and short. Ahmad Jones on the catch. Just a quick slant route there for the Vikings. Nothing pretty. Southern Lee sitting back in, in deep coverage there. Looked like they had about an eight-yard cushion. You know, we, we've talked often about how much we love coming down here to Union Pines. They've got the video board. They mic the refs. There's a new wrinkle. If you look across the field at the uh, down marker, it's lit. It is lit. How awesome is that? Yep. And the Cavaliers, they get them with the hard count. And that'll be a first down, Vikings moving from left to right across the screen. This defense of the Cavaliers getting a little excited there. Again, that was number 44, John Wilson jumping off sides. Sophomore gets exciting, big game. Those things happen. Well, as if this game wasn't big enough in terms of its magnitude and what it means for the conference, this is uh, youth football recognition night. Oh, wow. So all of the, or the middle schools and youth programs from around the uh, the area are in attendance tonight. So that's always a lot of fun. All right, first and 10, minute and a half gone here in the first quarter. Looks like we're having some clock operator difficulties here. Yeah, it's early, you know. Yeah, it's still getting warmed up. It's just the first drive. Suddenly coming out in a 4-3 front looking. All right, anybody that's familiar with Union Pines knows they'll stay spread most of the night tonight. Coach Lonnie Cox in his first year here with Union Pines is an air raid guy through and through. 100%. Loves the tunnel screen. See, I would expect to see a lot of tunnel and a lot of bubble coming tonight. We do have a third string running back tonight. Uh, we watched last week their number one running back. His, his name's slipping me at this moment. Tyreek McCoy. Tyreek McCoy, how could I forget that? was uh, injured against Lee County High School. Started concussion protocol there. We don't know any updates on that. But in his place tonight, Mick Teixeira, number two. All right, Ford gets it out. It's Ahmad Jones again. Does a little dance, gives up ground, gets it back, and is out across the 35 to the 37, and that's another first down for the Vikings. 
That is the exact same play they ran on second down last series. Southern Lee, I would expect to uh, make a few changes and just drive pretty quick. Coach Lonnie Cox really exposing what uh, Southern Lee High School is giving to him right now. Well, and, and you know, Coach Cox and, and his quarterback, Board, um, taking a peek at what's available to him. Ahmad Jones with two receptions already, not necessarily the guy you'd expect to get to be that involved early in the passing game. Uh, number 19, Jared Bo Bobliss comes in, leading the team in receptions. And uh, the second choice in the passing game is usually Archie Chandler, number four. Yeah. So. Seeing some changes, some quick changes tonight. But if Sunley's defense is going to give it to him, the young man has proven he can catch the ball tonight so far. So let's keep right on rolling with that. All right, the Vikings no huddle, but definitely running at a deliberate pace right now. You would definitely expect Southern Lee to come out and try to control the clock in their triple option. That's part of Kid Neal's scheme as an offensive play caller. So not what we're used to seeing from the Union Pines Vikings here, though. Well, if the Vikings run at this pace, given the pace that Southern Lee is going to run at, um, there's not going to be a whole lot of offensive plays called in this game. No. <laughs> All right. First incompletion from board as he throws it out, out of bounds on the right side. About three minutes gone in the first quarter. Third and six. This is a really good down and distance for this air raid RPO based offense. They, lo they love the third and fours, third and sixes. And Coach Cox, a little bit of a gambler, he might be thinking four down territory right now. It's entirely possible. All right, we'll see what he's got up his sleeve. Man coverage across the board from the Cavaliers. One high. Board takes a snap, drops, got time. Now he's under pressure. Flings it out there, just wants to get rid of it, Good throws play. it out of bounds. And it lands safely behind the Union Pines bench. But that will bring up fourth down. The punt team comes out onto the field. Now, you said Lonnie Cox, Riverboat Gambler. We saw a fake punt last week against Lee County. And on an atrocious, atrocious, atrocious call, call uh, what would have been a touchdown was called back. And, and you know, not necessarily a game-changing play in a, in a, in a game – where the final tally was 46-6, but a big momentum shift. Absolutely. And that and a couple of, of you know, bad breaks and other aspects of the game all kind of conspired to make that score look a lot worse than it was. If my memory was serving correctly, that would have made the ball game a one-possession ball game at that time. So uh, you're right. That is a big momentum swing. All right. Punt is fair caught at the 30-yard line, and we'll get our first look at the Southern League Cavaliers. Led onto the field by junior quarterback DeAndre McAllister in his second start at quarterback since the injury to Thomas Harrington. Yeah. Has done pretty well so far. McAllister is a, an amazing athlete. Um, actually, was as the backup quarterback was doing time at tailback before the injury to Harrington, the senior quarterback who's uh, wandering around here somewhere in a, in a wrist cast. <laughs> I sure hope we didn't jinx it because – uh, the week before, we had talked about that on air, saying, you know, that's kind of risky putting your number two quarterback out there. And then, boom, Mr. Harrington goes down, and here we are. <laughs> All right, offsides on the Vikings. That'll be first and five, and that'll be just fine for Coach Neal. Even after the penalty has his offense huddle up. Yeah. What do you think about that? It's 2019, Coach Neal. What are you doing? <laughs> Southern League coming out of right, this McAllister pistol. hands up the middle, and it's Rodney Ingram on the carry, gets a few. Expect to see a whole lot of that tonight, Chris, and all of our viewers at home. Whole lot of inside, inside triple. Although Mr. McAllister can definitely uh, boot it out there. So, and we saw two weeks ago, he's not afraid to throw the ball either. Yeah, so. the, question, the, the question was, you know, how much would they lose in the passing game with McAllister coming in for Harrington? McAllister rolls right, throws back across his body, looking for Lockley. And great coverage on the play as the ball's knocked down by Archie Chandler. Little underthrown. But a nice but play to break that up. That was a deep poster out there from Tanoa Lockley. He comes down with those more often than he doesn't. So Well, and McAllister's got to give him a little bit of room to run under that. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Lockley, not too many people are going to stay with him when he gets into that fifth gear. You're right. All right, McAllister goes all the way to the sideline to get the play, runs it back out into the huddle. Again, I hate that, Chris, and I'm going to tell you why. You burn so much energy 
Back and forth, back and forth, back Look, and forth. When I was 17, I had plenty of energy for you to burn, and I, I'm <laughs> sure McAllister does too. All right, all that for Ingram to be stacked up in the backfield, and you got a big fourth down coming up for the Cavs. They'll punt it away. Number 18, I Daniel Pisano, by punter. Good first defensive series. You know, we talked, I, I had several platforms on which I analyzed last week's game, the, the Lee County Union Pines matchup. <laughs> several platforms. And, yeah, several. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I took away from that game, and, and you and I agreed, I've never seen a Union Pines team that tackles this well. Mm -hmm. um, they did a really good job. In fact, there were a couple we almost burn ourselves with early calls where we saw Bullware or another one of those athletes down there at Lee County hit what looked like, you know, was going to be a home run, and uh, Union Pines snuffed it. And uh, some good athletes on that defense. I was impressed Absol with the Absolutely. defense. Absolutely. We, right. we saw a lot of fight from the Vikings last week. And yeah. Seems like it is definitely transitioning into this week already. Well, this is up to this point. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that this is the most important game in the conference this year. Um, Lee County fans would, you know, might dispute that and say their game against Union Pines was bigger. And, you know, the Brick City Bowl at the end of the year, depending upon how this game turns out, could be a huge one as well. All right. The hand is to Shashara, and he's going nowhere. No gain, second and ten coming up. This is really a good spot, though, for Union Pines. Field position-wise, this air raid offense can get down the field pretty quick. Starting on your own, 43, you got 57 yards to go. For air raid type guys, this you love this field position. Southern, Southern Lee coming out in a three-man front this series. Well, I was interested to see how they would match up, and they're, they're, they're playing man across the board. Oh, and a blitz coming. Ooh. Gets it out quick. And the receiver does a little work, gets about half of what he needed. That'll bring up third and about four. Number, number 17, Holden Dull on the reception. And number 26, A.J. West on the tackle. So you've got, for my money, the best pair of corners in this conference out there on that Southern, Southern Lee uh, defense. Number three, Tanoa Lockley and his running mate, Oh, oh, come on. That's what I thought was going on. And his running mate, Elijah Fox, um, they're special. Oh, and absolutely. And they're special as a, a tandem. Um, I thought we would see the matchup on number 19, Bobliss, and on number four, Chandler. However, they've moved EJ Fox over to Ahmad Jones now. And it looks like. And it looks like. Lockley's going to take whichever is in the slot on the left side of the formation, which is interesting. All right, the hand is to Teixeira. Not going to be much there for him. That defensive line for Southern Lee, I think, has outperformed what a lot of people expected from it this year. Your Absolutely. Thoughts? Those are This defensive line is led by number 41, Cedric Douglas, and number 50, Elijah Barrett. Those two young men. Not taking anything against them. They're a little bit on the shorter stature, and they are big, and they are strong, and they are fast. Yeah. And as an offensive lineman, that, those are the guys that give you a whole lot of trouble who can stay low, and you've got to try to get even lower than they are. It's hard to do. These young men have really done a good job. Blitz is coming. Ball's out a little late, and Fox is there to break it up. Well, Southern Lee's really bringing it right now. Came, a, came out a beat late looking for Jones on the right sideline, and third and nine with 6.15 left in the first quarter. This game feels like it's going a lot quicker than last week's first quarter did. <laughs> Expect to see a good bit of, of movement up front from the Southern Lee defense throughout this game. Um, in some film review, look like uh, Union Pines didn't always do an amazing job picking up movement up front. And so watch these front three and some linebackers coming in and out, really trying to play games with the front five of the Vikings. All right, third and nine, man in motion. Board, pumps, checks it down to Chandler, and he'll be close, depends on the spot. They're going to mark him out at the 40, about three yards short of the first down. Coach so Cox is big. Four down territory First here. big call of the night. No hesitation as he's waving in the play. Is this the first time we see Tunnel tonight, Chris? I think they're going to hit a, a short slant route here. You know, you need three yards, do what you do best. So, yeah, I think the tunnel's coming. Nope. Oh, Coach tried Cox, to draw him off. Coach Cox trying to get a hard count there. 
going to take a timeout and talk about this. We'll see if he keeps with his gut and goes for it on the other side of the break. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week. We'll see you on the other side of the break. It's my favorite time of the year. Football is back. I would like to personally invite you to come down for your next new or pre-owned vehicle purchase. With one of the largest new and pre-owned inventories in the area, come see us today for discounts that the competition simply can't match or beat. If you drive in Sanford, why not buy in Sanford? Come see me, the deal maker. Come and get that big town deal with that small town feel right here at Crossroads Ford in Sanford. All right, welcome back to the NFH NFHS Game of the Week. I'm Krista Lambert, Nathan Cochran here doing the color tonight. And uh, Nate, not a whole lot of explosiveness. No, we're, we're not so far. We're not seeing a whole from Le from Southern Lee. We expect to see a little bit of ground to pound from Union Pines. We we usually see a few big shots down the field. We haven't seen much from them so far All tonight. Right, Coach Cox, with time to think about it, decides to punt. It's a directional kick away from the returner. And it'll roll dead inside the 10-yard line, about the nine. So the Cavaliers with just about a full field in front of them. Offense comes back out onto the field. Coach Cox trusting his defense there, playing the field position ball game right now. All right, so it's a steady procession of different backs in the Southern League backfield. When they break the huddle, we'll see who's in there at this point. We saw Ingram and Locklear during the first series. This looks like Locklear and behind him, Kashawn Mays. Who has come on as a third string back and did, has Mays. done a miraculous job this he year really for has. Um, I don't think anybody associated with the program thought that Mays would be a significant part of the offense at this, part, at this point in the season. Mm -hmm. And he's just played so well that his guys have come back healthy and they've added people into the mix. They can't get him out of there. Yeah. It's kind of one of those you, you get dumped in trial by fire and you do so well you can't get back out. <laughs> well, and you know, as they've cycled some guys through that offense at the tailback position, some of them have done it a little reluctantly. Not yeah. Mays. No, Mays, he, Mays is, a, is, a, is a heck of a linebacker, but he, he much prefers to be running the football, given his druthers. All right, fakes it inside, throws it outside. A little miscommunication there. Fox cut off his route and Lockley went deep. And third and six, third and seven coming up here. 5.13 to go in the first period. Um, this Southern Lee offense is not looking in sync right now. Not looking like they're, not looking like there's a ton of communication out there, like they know what everyone's doing. Don't know if it's a little bit of early game jitters, but what, not, not the normal offense we've been seeing from Southern Lee this year. McAllister from the gun here. A oh, way overthrow. Oh, and Nate, you said it. There it's it miscommunication in the uh, in the passing game so far. It just look is, is look disjointed. You had the long ball that was underthrown to to, to uh, Lockley early, and those last two efforts, somebody's not on the same sheet of music. So no. We'll see if the Cavaliers can get it worked out. In in the meantime, they'll be punting from their own end zone. Something cool tonight that uh, Union Pines announced earlier that I didn't know. Number nine from a few years ago um, from here at Union Pines, who's playing at the University of West Virginia, is here oh. on campus tonight. So good, good to see him back. I remember coaching against that young man. He is a heck of a defensive end. <laughs> All right. So the punt downed right about midfield. Another great field position for the Union Pines Vikings. Coach Cox has to be thinking points here with such great field position. This is the second drive that they've been, you know, in that 40 to 60 yards to go range. Got to be thinking points. Got to be thinking points quick here. All right, five minutes to go. Pretty quiet on both sides offensively. Haven't seen a, haven't seen a legit screen yet. Not going to here either. Board's going to keep it after the fake. He'll get about six on the play. So nice way to open up the the series. Yeah, and I believe that was a senior quarterback just making a play out of nothing. If you if you watched the the RPO action, um, board stuck it out there to ride. Running back went straight up. All of a sudden, board's like, oh boy, I gotta do something with this ball. And he tucked it and run, ended up getting six yards. So good heads up play by a senior quarterback. Right, th three wide right, board in the gun with Teixeira. 
Tejera is up the middle. And will have a first down Ooh. as he keeps his feet all the way down to the 35-yard line. Good play there by Mr. Teixeira. Kept driving his feet. Union Pines first down on their on Southern Lee's 35. All right. A bit more. All right. Board hands to Teixeira. Teixeira, hard run. Oh, get nowhere. Over. All right, gets three on the play, second and seven coming up. Yeah, I'm with you know, with McCoy out, I'm a little surprised to see this dedication to that belly play. Yep. But been relatively effective. You've got as effective as effective as anything else has been for either team tonight. <laughs> You've got to establish that run though and show, yes, our our star running back is out, but we are still not afraid to keep you honest up up the middle. All right. Board hands to Teixeira again. Teixeira drag down, rolls forward, and third and short coming. You know, in the matchup, in the in the days leading up to the Lee County Union Pines game last week, I, I had a, several opportunities to talk to Coach Cox, and one of the big topics of conversation with anybody playing Lee County is how you deal with that defensive front. And Coach Cox told me he was every bit as concerned with this front from Southern as he was Lee County's much more well-known, maybe, yes. um, defenders. Of course, Desmond Evans, the number one recruit in the state. Uh, he of the recent announcement to UNC and uh, his less heralded but just as effective counterpart, DeAndre Dingle Prince. That's a, that's a nightmare, but mm. Coach Cox told anybody to listen, don't sleep on Cedric Douglas and Elijah Barrett here from Southern Lee. I had, a, I had an opportunity on Monday to spend some time with, with Cedric Douglas, and he confirmed for me that, yes, he does squat 600 pounds. I believe it. The young man as a freshman All came right, in squat Sherry. 400. All right, drag down, getting positive yardage every time he touches the ball. Now he'll get eight, second and short now, and Union Pine starting to move this ball a little willfully. Yeah. Suddenly defense kind of reeling at the moment. And to be honest, I'm not sure why Union Pines isn't throwing anything crazy into the wrinkle. Union Pines comes out and trips to the short side of the field. That's a, that's a bunch there. That's screaming to me, Nate. Oh, now they bring oh. Chandler in motion. And the hand is to, to share again. There it is. And the Cavaliers said, we've seen that one too many times. <laughs> Motion's not going to fool us tonight. No, sir. No, sir. John Wilson, who I don't know what anybody expected out of this young man this year in terms of his ceiling. This was, I think, supposed to be more of a feeling out process and week to week to week. This young man's gotten more active, more be more impactful, and at this point is probably the MVP on this defense for my money. And just like that, the Cavaliers shoot themselves in the foot. Southern League Much gives them the another one. Win of defensive coordinator Rob <laughs> Patterson, who's within earshot of us. I'm not going to say anything too loud because having coached with him for a couple years, he might come punch me in the face. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just got a look from his <laughs> his running mate over there, Philip Chapel on the on the roof doing some spotting for the team. All right, board hands. Tejera dragged down. Nice stop by the Cavalier defensive front. Second and nine coming up. Now, remind my memory because it, it's failing me right now. Union Pines kicking game. Coach Cox confident in it. Strong. Strong. Good. Strong as long as they can protect. That's going to be the issue for Union Pines. Um, but isn't it for every high school uh, football yeah. team in the country? Well, even college. Watching the SMU-Houston game last night, that kicking game was less than um, appealing. Right, board scrambles. Uh-oh, he's dangerous. Oh, and, and there he is. Head over heels into the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings. Roy Board doing his best Randall Cunningham uh, yeah. there. Yeah. Flying through the air. Not afraid to get a little dirt on that jersey there. Coach Cox, well, this may answer some questions about the kicking game. You're going to keep the offense out on the field. We'll go for two. Um, yeah, ordinarily a, a reasonably good kicking game. However, 
Their kicker's nursing a little bit of an injury, a little banged up from a soccer game, I'm told. Oh. Yeah, I know. That you got to get the kickers old, out of soccer. Pesky old soccer. The best kickers are soccer players who stop in ninth grade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, board from the gun. Chandler in motion. Swings it out to him on the lateral. Leaves it for Chandler to do. He's spun around, fighting, going backwards. Gives up ground, goes out of bounds, and that'll be the end of that. All right, so 32 seconds left in the first quarter. 6-0 Union Pines. We'll take a quick break. Be back with the kickoff. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week. It's game day at Classic Nissan, the starting lineup. Your captains on offense, number five, Holvin Cruz. And number 10, Jasmine Dole. Your captains on defense, number 55, Wesley Tater Womack. Number seven, Steve Dandrett. Whether you're a Yellow Jacket or a Cavalier, everybody gets a classic deal. For sales, service, or parts, visit us at ClassicNissanSanford.com or in person on Highway 87 right across from Walmart in Sanford. You are watching the NFHS Game of the Week brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Big city deals with a small town feel. All right. How did the coaches go, show go Monday night there at Classic Nissan with all the whole crew? Long, long, long. I thought it was great. Um, a whole lot of things packed into an hour's worth of television. Um, we obviously gave awards for players of the week from both schools. Um, we did a special segment with Desmond Evans and Jaden Chalmers, the two UNC commits from uh, Lee County High. We had a chance to uh, talk to a lot of people. Good. It was it was it was a great time. Thanks to Crossroads or Classic Nissan, excuse me. Special thanks to Classic Nissan to Zaxby's for bringing over the the food. They did a great job with the food, by the way. Zaxby's has been on fire, um, man. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna tell you, sponsoring the 5K, all the all the stuff they do for high school sports on fire, man. All right, Ingram. Looking to get untracked, won't happen there. Gets two, and that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. Low scoring affair. Ooh, not what thought we this might be. Thought this might be a little bit more wide open than it's been, but uh, to this point, not so much. As we go to double zeros, we will take a break and uh, come back to see if Southern Lee can get the offense untracked. 90 years ago, First Bank was founded. You know First Bank. The one where you are greeted by name, the one dedicated to the community, and the one born in the heart of the Carolinas. We help our customers to realize their dreams by providing financial solutions and building trusted relationships. Hi, I'm David Fashi, and we are First Bank. You are watching the NFHS Game of the Week, brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Getting the second quarter rocking and rolling there, Chris. Yeah. Although the team still haven't flipped field yet. No, nope, there they go. There, Southern Lee. There they go. Getting their heads together, knowing they got to go to the other side. Thought maybe we were going to do something new today. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, it's been, I don't know if it was last season, we played a game here within the last two seasons where the lights went out on one side of the field. Oh, wow. So we ended up, they had to get a little a little creative and play on the lit side of the field. It was interesting. They didn't pull trucks up over there to the slope and cut no, the lights that on? Been, that would have been cool. That would have been something to see in a movie. Yeah. All right. Second and eight here for the Cavaliers. McAllister flips to the right. This is Nick Locklear with a head of steam, and it'll be close to a first down, but dragged down on a nice tackle there by guess who? Hold Griner. Oh, you don't say. Number 69. Dude. Senior linebacker filling in as a guard. That dude is in on every play. We saw it last week. I am late to the party on number 69. This guy. Coach Cox talked him up pretty good in advance of uh, last week's game. But what Holden Grainer does in terms of effort 
on the field is as impressive as you're going to see at the high school level. Yeah. He's everywhere. I talked to Coach Cox on Friday after the Lee County game, and I told him, that kid is special. All right. Third and short, Coach Ken Neal wants a timeout to talk about it. We'll stay right here as they uh, go to timeout. Yeah, Grainer, a um, little undersized. Yeah. But plays very, very quickly. Um, has a nose for the ball. Mostly because he's got such great in instincts. And when he gets his hands on you, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Very impressive ball player. Coach Cox and I went back and forth a little bit as to, uh, you know, what accolades – might be coming his way. I feel like he's a serious candidate for uh, all-conference honors. Oh, without this a doubt. Is a, this is a, uh, you say I, without a doubt, then you have to start peeling it back and look at the guys that you're talking about in that same conversation at linebacker. So we There's some say, good ones. Larry Baldwin ones. at Lee County, Larry John Baldwin. Wilson here at Southern Lee. Yeah, yes, sir. Those I don't, I don't remember anyone outstanding at Western Hornet. We haven't seen Triton or – Hornet Central yet. I don't know if we will, but you're right. I retract my statement of absolutely. That's All right, from the gun, the hand is up the middle to Ingram, who's going to have a first down. He's dragged down near midfield. He'll get six on the play, and that'll be a Southern Leaf first down. Um, a Pentair first down. A Pentair first Pentair down. Pentair first down. So is is that the first first down for Southern Lee? The same question because I think that it is. I think it is. All right. So trailing six zero early, Cavaliers trying to build some momentum. And I'm, you know, if that's going to be a regular thing, I'm going to jump in the camp with you that I don't like McAllister running all the way back and forth, not in a run offense. I don't know that that's <laughs> a, a particularly great idea, but we'll see how that how that goes throughout the game. McAllister from the gun. Everybody going to the right. McAllister putting his shoulder down, runs through a tackle. Whoa, whoa. And we'll have another man. Pintair first down for the Cavaliers. He gets 14 on the play all the way down to the 36-yard line. Not afraid of contact, is he, Nate? No, absolutely not. But you see, that is such a long run for that it young is, man. That is a long way. Football fields are 53 yards long, and I'm, I'm something like that. And, and he's hitting almost all of it. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Getting his cardio in for sure. All right. First and ten Cavaliers. Ten and a half to go in the first quarter. They gotta make sure they're looking at the play clock here. They're sitting at five seconds well, already. Not, not sure why the game clock's not running, but that's a whole nother story. Ran out of bounds. And oh yeah, he did. My <laughs> fault. My fault. All right. What do we have here? Movement all over the place. They're gonna false call it start. on the offense. False start, and that'll move Southern Lee backwards five. The mic's not working at optimal capacity today for the referees. What a nice night for football, Chris. It's a great night. It's a great night, and I need to hold on for, you know, I need this whole great weather to hold out for another hour and, I don't know, hour and a half or so. You're brave out here in shorts. I know. That's what I was getting at. <laughs> All right, Tanoa Lockley checks into the game. He's at the top of the screen. McAllister rolling, dumps it over the top to Fox. Oh. That was a cute little pass, trying to drop it in over the defense, but just out of the reach of Fox. Can't get there, and second and 15 coming up after the incompletion. If that ball had been completed, though, he had a lot of room yes, there. Yes, he did. If you're Union Pines defense, you're you're a little bit happy on that one because Mr. Fox, once he gets the ball in his hand, can do really special things, and, and that could have been real dangerous for the Vikings. Callister once again shuttles the play in. And the offense, the way it's been called so far, is not doing any favors because he seems to be perpetually on the far side of the field <laughs> um, on, this, on this near side set of hashes. All right, that time to Fox. Fox breaks the tackle. There's two. Turns it back up inside, and he'll have 12, 17 on the play. And a first down. Me, and a first down, first and 10 Southern Lee. That's another Pentair first down as they creep closer to the Remax red zone. Um, yeah, I thought Fox would have done better to stay outside there, but cut it back up in and be able to get the first down. We just talked about how dangerous he is with the ball and saying, made two Union Pine defenders miss real quick. Uh, luckily for Union Pines, they had guys trailing that made the tackle, but one man's not going to bring him down very often. Right, Ooh. Woof. 
Ooh. Union Pines bringing the house. And that's one where the read doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it was quarterback or, or uh, running back. Somebody was going down. Union Pines brought the house. And guess who it was on that tackle? You can't imagine. Can't number 69. <laughs> of course it was. Holden Grainer. Number 69, Holden Grainer. Host the Vikings in there on that tackle. That kid, that, that kid is definitely D2, small one, D1 potential size right there. So any coaches out there watching us tonight, give that young man a call. All right. Fakes the hand to Fox again. Fox down inside the 20. He'll get about nine on the play, bring up third and five. What do you think here, Chris? Think they go back to the run, or do you think they stick with this little short, short game, short well, passing game? Nate. I've been saying for four years that every time I needed to play, I'd get the ball in number three's hands. Mm -hmm. I'd do it here. Um, I don't know what they're going to do out of this formation, but to know a Lockley be my guy, or I just go hard count and draw the offsides. That's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be a spot issue to see if they're going to give them enough for the first down. They have and it. And they have it. So that is a Pintair first down the easy way for the Cavaliers. All right, for the first time tonight inside the REMAX red zone. Ball spotted at the 18. Back to the same formation here. And they're going to roll to the wide side, and that Ooh, never that was chance. not it. It's an interesting look there. It was a design quarterback keep there, so it makes you think lead, but there were no lead blockers in the vicinity of where that tackle came from. I don't know if that was a – Offensive line blip or, or what, but. Well, and after that play, a change on the offensive line. As the Cavaliers run in number 72. And out is number 60. So Sosa came out. Oh, McAllister now with a head of steam. He pushed out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. So second and long, he gets positive yardage, but they've still got work to do here on third down. Number 72 came back into the game after that play, so I don't know if they done something gimmicky with number 60 in the game. What do you think, Nate? Could have been thoughts? something as, you know, they needed a uniform adjustment per the officials. I didn't see a helmet come off. Well, Sosa, so, something gimmicky. Number 60, Sosa is the normal starter there at left guard for the Cavaliers and not playing tonight. Um, so Aiden Lloyd, number 72, the junior is playing left guard. Uh, nice catch there in traffic and brought down at the nine-yard line. Southern League going to opt for the field goal here. What do you think about this call? I like it. Get points up on the board, hopefully. Attempt to get points up on the board. Looks like it's going to be about a 25-yarder. We've seen Daniel Pisano make this and more, so he definitely has the, the leg strength to get it there. And like we said with Union Pines, the key here is, is protecting that. This is a close setup, though. If you're looking at this placeholder, he is very close to that line. Usually it's a it's a seven to eight yard cushion, yeah, whereas he's yard, a five, five yard, yard drop. That's interesting. Yep, there's a flag on the play. I'm not sure what the discussion is about. I don't see they're a flag motioning, on the play to you. They're motioning for a play clock. They 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 did the motion for the resetting the play clock here. Once a once the ball snapped, you can't stop a play for a play clock, Chris. Coach Coach Neal not real excited about this turn of events here, not even a little bit. Well, I, I thought I could hear him <laughs> yelling from down there on the sideline. He's not much of a screamer. No, but uh, yeah, he's he's trying to get the the crew's attention. I don't understand how you can blow a play dead if there wasn't a delay a game for a play clock reset. Well, now they're going to talk to Coach Cox, and I wonder if they're going to put that three points on the board. That can only be that can be the only <laughs> thing that they're talking about right now, right? <laughs> Was it an inadvertent? Are they claiming an inadvertent four whistles? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Nope. Maybe he's telling them if they're going to keep the game, the play clock on the field. After all of that, they're telling him to restart the play clock. That, Nate Cochran, is bizarre. That is um, no comment. I'm just going to stop before I say something. All right, Daddy Pisano up to kick this the second time. First time was good. Let's First see if he can hit the second great. time. Look great. Kick is up. Kick is good. And after all that, no, they're going to say wide left. No play clock reset this time. The, <laughs> the suddenly <laughs> sideline is a little incredulous. From our vantage point, look good. Yeah. Apparently from the suddenly sideline, it looked good too. But uh, all right, here we go. Well, we don't have instant replay in high school, so you can't go back and review it. Well, I don't know that anybody's got the perfect angle for that anyway. But uh, okay, so after all that, Union Pines holds ball. Come back out to the 20-yard line. Well, they'll start first and 10, 7.02 to go in the half. And after being, you know, very much in the background for most of this first half, the referees are front and center a couple of plays. Hmm. Interesting uh, turn of events there. Very interesting turn of events. Yes, sir. All right, three-man front for the Cavaliers. Board from the spread, three wide left. And we've got a play clock issue again. Are they going to call it delay a game coming out of the out of the change of possession? Yep. Yep, that looks like what it's going to be. This one's teetering on out of control, <laughs> Nate. <laughs> hey, White Hat, swallow your whistle, buddy. <laughs> First and 15. Wow. 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 <laughs> Let the boys play. Let's go. For real. <laughs> All right. All right. Board hands inside. Teixeira stacked up going nowhere. He so wanted He wanted no part of that. He had turned his back before a defender even got there. He wanted no part Well, Jim that run. spot there. They're going to be forward progress all the way back out to the 14, which means it's only a one-yard loss. Looks like he lost closer to four from here. All right, second and long, second and 16 coming up for the Vikings. Who put together a really, really impressive drive last time up. They've got a long way to go on this drive, though. Second and 17, you don't want to go for the whole chunk here. I mean, of course, you would love for, for that. Oh, good gracious. Motion from the Vikings. They're going to back them up. We got a false start. I didn't see the false start. It was the far line judge who threw it. I didn't see it either. Well, the motion that I saw when the flag came out was the cornerback, Fox, bailing on the receiver. <laughs> I didn't see any motion from anybody on the Union Pine side of the ball, but uh, maybe it caused the wide receiver to flinch. There's the pass. Oh, Good I tell you what. Break up. You got to get that out of there quicker. Fox was lurking as Board tried to find Ahmad Jones. Fox got there just as the ball did. Now you got third and a mile, and we talked about – the good down and distances this offense had put itself into. This is not one that's great for <laughs> Union Pines. It's a quick passing offense. Now, that said, they got a couple guys in particular, number four, who's lined up in the middle of this clump of three receivers over here on the left side um, who can get down the field. All right, board flushed, running right. He's got a lot of space, and he'll be forced out of bounds. Nice play coming up to stop that number five. Not on Southern Lee's roster. Yeah, who came up and was the only guy left. Stevie Cameron. Steve Cameron. Stevie Cameron. Why is he not on the roster? <sighs> that is we a great question. That. He's on the roster at the very bottom on Max Preps, just no number. Yeah. So well, Steve Cameron, number five, he was the only guy on the left side of the field. Took a good angle to make the quarterback board there. If, if board Flushed makes him down. miss, he might still be running. All right, Union Pines to punt. Good protection, low liner, fielded on a bounce, and returned right back up there. Number two on the return. Also no also roster. Not on the roster. No but roster. I bet I know somebody who can tell me who that is. Number two. Kenny Palmer. We've called his name a couple times. I should have remembered that. I apologize. I'm slacking on a Friday. 
All right, so good field position for the Cavaliers. 6.05 left in the first half. Trying to get on the board here as they trail 6-0 on the road at Union Pines. And you say on the road, man, this is this is a pretty short trip. <laughs> All right, Lockley going to get it on the on the screen and it'll be run out of bounds. Near sideline, they're going to give him three on the play. Maybe four by the time they finish walking out there. I believe I was calling this offense, this would be the Tanoa Lockley drive. And I know Coach Neal personally, he hates tunnel screens. He hates bubbles. He, he hates them. He tells me he hates them. He's told everyone he hates them. I believe I'd be getting to know Lockley. Including his former play. offensive coordinator, Lonnie, Lonnie Cox, Cox, who is in love with the tunnel. <laughs> so there you go. All right. McAllister looking to throw, looking for Fox to get Good Fox. Good play by Fox. Wet, makes a nice catch. He'll be dragged down at the 23-yard line. That'll be a Southern Lee first down. Um Fox been the weapon in the in the passing game, mm -hmm. and a couple of throws from McAllister haven't looked beautiful, but they've been effective. Um, I, you know, if I was over there on the sideline with Coach Neal, I'd just be following him around. Come on, Coach, screen time, screen time, <laughs> screen time, screen time. And I know, I, I don't know, what, where does the aversion for the screen pass come from? Old school. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I hate to say it, old school. I mean, all if you look at Coach Neal's coaching lineage of who he's coached with, he's always coached with triple eye power type guys. All right, well, I thought Tanoa might throw it there. Lockley makes a man miss, dances. Oh, takes a man head oh. up. Now running, run, channeling his inner Rodney Ingram. <laughs> I didn't know Tanoa had that in him. He down to the 14-yard line. And the Cavaliers are in the Remax red zone here. Yes, sir, they are. Lockley must not be reading his own liner notes, man. That's a guy that's supposed to dance around you, not go through you. <laughs> Maybe indicative of how big a ball game this is. Second and one coming up. Nope, they're going to give him the first down. Wow. All right. Looked a little short for me, but well, gracious spot. They so. go over and eyeball it from the sideline. Don't bring the chains out onto the field. Ooh, that's a long run for the chain guy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, about as long as McAllister is doing every single play. All right, McAllister from the oh, gun. Oh, come on. on left tackle. Yeah, don't hold your hands up like you don't know who it was. Well, <laughs> there were multiple Cavaliers move there. So confusion one way or the other. That will back them back up five. Southern Lee cannot shoot themselves in the foot like this. this is, the triple offense is not an offense that is designed to pick up large chunks at a time. And starting at first and 15, Kills you. Kills you. So. All right. McAllister. Four wideouts. They're going to go Coming out in doubles wide. here. They're going to stack them on both sides. Lockley particularly deep. And looking. Throws. Oh, my oh, gosh. That was a touchdown, Oh, it buddy. was there. What a play design. Oh, I, I and he was past the line of scrimmage. He, When that ball was released, past the line of scrimmage. So you say old school, but then you see the, the sort of pass option look there as McAllister took it around the left side. The options to either keep running or to flip it ahead via the forward pass. Lockley was there. He just threw it over top of his head. That's twice that mm. he's had one of those athletes in space and missed them high. Young quarterback yips. Yeah. Big game. He knows it's a big game. All right, five Everyone's talked about it all week. Five yards from the point of the infraction on the illegal forward pass and a loss of down. So second and 19 coming up. And Cavaliers, you said they couldn't shoot themselves in the foot. They've done it twice. McAllister from the gun. Fakes the handoff. Nope, it's on the ground. Oh, and that is no. Union Pines football. That is not what you want. All right. So Mays and McAllister unable to work it out. Don't know if that was supposed to be the handoff or if uh, he was trying to pull it out of there, but one way or the other, the ball's on the ground. Union Pines on it and going the other way. So the Vikings, 4.45 before halftime, looking for a chance to score and stretch this lead. If I'm sitting at second and 20, I am taking a shot here with Tanoa Lockley. All right. Mick Tejera into the secondary with his longest run of the night. That's 13 
and a Vikings first down as he takes the ball out across the 35. Mm. Union Pines coming out strong on this, this drive. Terry, back it out just a little bit. All right, the hand is to Teixeira picking his way through the line and now dragging tacklers. Impressive little four-yard run for Teixeira. The young man likes to keep his feet moving. Yes, sir. I like him. I like it. Right. Union Pines here, I'd expect to see if they can sustain a longer drive, kind of burning some of the clock. You know, you would love to burn these last three minutes, 50 seconds, get points up on the board, go into halftime to uh, two-score lead here. Yeah, very methodical pace from the Vikings. Board, pumps, going uh, downtown go. for Bobless. Got him. Bobless dragging a tackle. Now fumbles oh. the football. It's on the ground and picked up by Lockley going the other way. Lockley. This could be real dangerous. Whoa, I tell you what. I don't know what Bogus was on doing. On both sides of the ball. Bogus with the beautiful catch over his shoulder on the left sideline. And on his way down to the ground as he dragged the tackler. It looked like he tossed it. <laughs> I don't know it what. It popped up into what the was air. Going there. And how unlikely is it that that oblong ball stopped without going out of bounds? Mm. Wild turn of events Noah here. Lockley, Johnny on the spot, able to snatch it up and uh, return the ball out to the 39-yard line. And good awareness by that Union Pines offense to pivot into defense very quickly because Lockley had touchdown on his mind. All right, three wide left for McAllister in the Cavs offense. McAllister rolling. He's running all the way. Cuts it up inside. Ooh. And drag down four on the play. Second and six coming up. Southern Lee here needs to play with a little bit of urgency. For those who sit at home and watch, they think three minutes, you know, Aaron Rodgers can score in 12. As a uh, triple option offense, though, you're not used to going real fast. We are seeing a faster pace here from the Cavaliers. Well, Southern Lee is very capable of running about four plays in three minutes if they, <laughs> if they care to. Um, McAllister from the gun. Flips it out there to Lockley. One of these he's going to throw. This time he'll run with it. And going to be dragged down, probably lose the yard on the play. Ooh. And, you know, McAllister's got to deliver that ball quicker. Quicker. And Lockley can't have to go get that ball. He's got to be able to get up the field and run with it. Now they're setting that up. And you and I both know Tanoa Lockley can throw the football. There's nothing on this field that Tanoa Lockley can't do. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I don't mind saying it on air. Uh, you can quote me. There is nothing on this field that he can't do. All right. Down near, just like that, down to two minutes left in the half. Big third down for the Cavaliers. McAllister gets it out quick to Fox. Fox has got the first down and more. Cuts it back up inside. He's across midfield, across the 40. And he'll have 19 on the play. And a Cavalier first down inside Viking territory. Exactly two minutes left in the first half. Cavaliers looking to get on the board, trailing 6-0. McAllister trots back over from the sideline one more time. Southern Lee still not. They didn't come out with much urgency this last play. Well, they got a pair of timeouts left. Burn. And a minute and a half to go. McAllister drops, rolls to his right, looking for Fox wide open. And great catch. He spun him around. But Fox able to get his foot in at the 21-yard line and another Cavalier first down. And this is as much as I've ever seen Elijah Fox featured in a Cavalier offense. Uh, Union Pines keeps leaving them there. I mean, they're, they're rolling their safety so far back. EJ's finding an open spot. DeAndre's hitting it to him. So, hey, if he's open, he's catching it. No need to change it. All right. Ball spotted at the 21-yard line, a minute 28 left in the half. Clock stopped. McAllister drops. Now he's going to take it up the middle, a little indecisive, and in the end gets nothing, and the clock continues to roll a minute 20 to go. Probably should have thrown that ball away. Probably should have. Cavaliers got uh, two timeouts left. 
no panic yet. Um, but I don't know that I'd be huddling. <laughs> clock continues to run. Play clock's at 20. Coach Neal definitely planning on taking this clock all the way down. Well, they get to the line of scrimmage. Play clock's at 14. Continues to run. The receivers haven't even got to their spots yet. Inside of 10. Game clock at 50. Swings it out to Lockwood. Lockwood makes a man miss. Cuts it inside. Oh, he was Whoa, a step he's dangerous. away. Now it's going to be third and two coming up. 40 seconds. Need to get a timeout. Coach Cavaliers. Neal should really Need call a, a timeout. timeout. There he there goes. It 38 is. seconds. Clock stops the clock. Third and two coming up. And you see the acceleration that we talk about with Tanoa Lockley as he goes from zero to 60 that fast. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, good job of bringing him down. And it speaks to what we talked about in the open. Uh, this Union Pines team will tackle, period. Once yeah. Tanoa Lockley gets ahead of steam, to be able to tackle him in the open field is, is really quite a task. And, and you're right, Coach Cox and his defensive staff here have done a phenomenal job. I've never seen a Union Pines team tackle this well. Yeah, I don't know what the drills, what they're what they're coaching, but this is a make a video, make some money off it because this is rolling. <laughs> this is a step or two up from the the last seven or eight years watching the squad. I bet if he called uh, Tim Copas there at New Image Media, he might produce it for him. I, I imagine that, <laughs> I imagine that Mr. Copas and New Image Media could make that happen. All right, clock stop. Thirty eight seconds left in the half. Union Pines Vikings up six zero on their guests. The Southern League Cavaliers. One conference loss between these two teams coming in as Union Pines dropped their game last week to the conference leaders, Lee County. All right, McAllister fakes to Ingram, throws Ooh. it, and bounced up into the air, a bad looking pass. And now fourth and a couple. Last time he had a situation like this Chris he, kicked, he attempted to kick the field goal Chris Southern Lee was playing that a man down they only had 10 players on the field that play so not well not what they need coach especially Neal, coming out of a timeout coach Neal's going to burn the last timeout 34 seconds left facing fourth and two we'll take a quick break and see what he's got up his sleeve when we get back on the other side of these messages are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with Remax Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. All right, welcome back. Big play for the Southern League Cavaliers. Fourth and two, 34 seconds left in the first half. Down 6-0. Southern already missed a field goal earlier. And that one. All padded. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage as DeAndre McAllister seemed to lock onto his receiver from the snap, and we'll turn it around going the other direction. First and 10, Vikings 31 seconds left in the half. I'd expect here from Union Pines, I'd expect one shot. If it's not successful, run the ball, run the clock out, go to halftime with the lead, don't do anything crazy that could cost you. Well, Lee, or Southern Lee has been, uh, hadn't disguised any of their coverages. No, uh, no. no. They're going, they're, they're going to, they're going to take this into victory formation and uh, run the clock out and take this 6-0 lead to halftime. And uh, I'm a little surprised by that. But, you know, you got a banged-up team coming in. You're in a big game. Don't give them a chance to get any momentum. All right, that'll take us to double zeros here in Cameron. Union Pines up 6-0 on wow. Southern Lee Cavaliers. Got a big second-half action coming up. Uh, we'll take a quick break and be back to talk about what we saw in the first half. Sounds good. Pentair, empowering people to move water, improve water, enjoy water, so that people can live their best, healthiest lives. Lives with purpose, lives with enjoyment, 
Lives that flourish. Lives with hope. Because at Pentair, we're not just about better water. We're about better life. Pentair, bringing water to life for life. Welcome to the Classic Nissan Halftime Report. Welcome to the Classic Nissan Halftime Show. I'm Kristen Lambert, Nathan Cochran. Nate, not a whole lot of fireworks offensively in the first half from either squad. Yeah, not the best showing for uh, Southerly or Union Pines. This Union Pines offense we're used to seeing be pretty explosive. That air raid offense, you, you expect a lot more downfield attempts. We haven't seen a whole lot of downfield attempts except for the, the one catch and interception right over – or catch and fumble right over here. Um Southern Lee, that offense is not clicking tonight. We've seen a lot of over, overthrown balls from DeAndre McAllister. Um, the run game has not been great. We've seen some some issues on the read and the RPO. So definitely not an offensive night that we were anticipating seeing up here. I wonder, last week coming off of two weeks off, they had two weeks to prepare DeAndre McAllister for his first start at quarterback mm -hmm. in high school period. I wonder if things went so well that they expanded the playbook just a little bit too much and sort of outkicked what he was capable of doing in a very short period of time. I would be very surprised if in the second half we don't see Southern Lee dial it back, take some of these wrinkles out of the offense that we're seeing them attempt right now, and go back to what they do, which is run the football to the edges and in the belly, period. Um, with a couple of throws sprinkled in to keep the defense honest. Because what we saw here looked a whole lot more like what we would have thought we'd see from Union Pines. Yep. And vice versa, with Union Pines running the football effectively and committing to it. So kind of interesting. But the, the, the net sum is that the Cavaliers trail 6-0 at halftime in a game they really need to get. Oh, yeah. Now, as badly as they need to get it, Union Pines really needs to get it. Uh, if Union Pines has any hope of winning the Tri-County 6, they've got to get a win here, and then they would need some help. They would need uh, Lee County to lose twice. Yeah, so, so. We, we'll see what happens. But they can't win the, the conference if they lose here, really. Absolutely. So Absolutely. there we are. Um, any other thoughts as we uh, move? Southern Lee really needs to reestablish that run like you talked about. We haven't seen a whole lot of Rodney Ingram. We haven't seen a whole lot of Nick Locklear. I personally would love to see Tanoa Lockley roll back down there to uh, – that tailback spot that we saw some early season. Uh, you know, he's such a dynamic player. Need to get the ball in his hand. You really do. We've seen it a couple times in little trickery, short game pass plays here. But we re they really need to get that young man the ball and reestablish Rod Ingram and Nick Locklear. All right. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Uh, we'll be back with the second half. I got to go to this concession because I love the Union Pines concession. It's a great venue. Um, Perfect place for football, perfect weather. Uh, we can't wait for the second half. We'll see you. This has been the Classic Nissan Halftime Show. We'll see you back for the third quarter. It's game day at Classic Nissan, the starting lineup. Your captains on offense, number five, Holden Cruz. And number 10, Jasmine Dowell. Your captains on defense, number 55, Wesley Tater Womack. Number seven, Steve Dandrit. Whether you're a Yellow Jacket or a Cavalier, everybody gets a classic deal. For sales, service, or parts, visit us at ClassicNissanSanford.com or in person on Highway 87, right across from Walmart in Sanford. Pines Vikings up 6-0 on Southern Lee. Not a whole lot of offense in the first half. Southern Lee, though, down inside the red zone. Got it close a couple of times. Had a missed field goal and then a, a failed fourth down conversion on another. Union Pines took advantage of their 1-4A into uh, the red zone and were able to come away with a touchdown, and that's the difference in the ball game. All right, Nate running a little late getting back on but sorry about that it's all good all 
right, here's the kick. A low liner fielded by Fox at the 15. Looking for a crease, won't find one. Gets it out across the 20, almost to the 25. They'll mark it at the 24, first and 10 Cavaliers. Action around the Tri-County 6. What do you got, Nate? Right now at halftime, we have Western Hornet and Triton locked up at 14 apiece. So the Western Hornet Eagles really coming on strong against the Triton Hawks. And Lee County leads Hornet Central 14 to 10 with a few seconds left till the first to the end of the first half. All right. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. A little surprising by the, no the tightness of that one there. All right, McAllister, two backs in the formation with him. Hands up the middle, and that is Ingram on the carry. You and I talked a little bit during the halftime. Reestablishing the run game. No better way than to hand that thing to Rodney Ingram a dozen times here in the first 20 plays. He gets seven on uh, the first down carry. Second is short coming up. As a sophomore, Rodney Ingram was an all-conference running back. Coming in his junior year, expect to see a heavy dose of Mr. Ingram, I would think. All right, McAllister takes a snap. Hands again. Ingram running over people. Oh, there it is. Gets seven on the play, and that'll be a Southern Leaf first down. This is the Southern Lee offense that we were expecting to see throughout the first half. All right, Union Pines with some changes on the defensive line. Doesn't make any difference to Rodney Ingram. He'll hit whoever anybody, they put in there. It anybody, doesn't make any difference. Anybody and everybody. Bubbly kid, man, always smiling. I love the kid. Still texts me about once a week All right. asking how I am. This time McAllister's going to pull it. He's going to take it himself. He's got 12 and out across midfield. That'll be a Cavalier first down, 10.40 to go in the third quarter. Woo, Southern Lee coming out of the half strong. Uh, amazing what happens when you run your offense. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. You have to wonder if the first half, Lee, Southern Lee was trying to get a little too cute on some of their play calling there. Cute's the word I'd use. Cute, yeah. It's a nice correct you know, word. If you're going to be a triple option team, live or die by Probably run the option. All right, McAllister fakes, pitches. This time it's Mays. Mays, ooh, nice going tackle. nowhere. We're yeah. going to have a late hold. Flag. Grainer Looks like there. A hold. Grainer coming up and pinching that thing off. Gosh, I like that I kid. <laughs> Gosh, I like that what kid. What do we have to do to transfer? Come on, let's get him <laughs> some extra eligibility. Yeah, that's a good ball player. All right, the flag is in the backfield, which Looks is like going to hurt. Oh. That this is a spot you. foul that's five yards deep in the backfield. This is going to cost you 10 from there. This is going to be a 15-yard penalty when it's all said and done. And, Chris, uh, I, I hate that call. It is a bad I, call. I hate that call, and I'll tell you why. A oh, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute. They're, they're going to decline it. Wow. Okay. So they're going to take second and 15 as opposed to first and 25. We'll see. All right. Interesting, interesting strategy in there employed by Coach Cox. All right, McAllister keeps following Ingram. Needed 15, got about nine. Third and six, maybe third and seven coming up here. Much more manageable. But talk about, you You said you hate that call there. I, I'll tell you why. Two defenders were coming in to make the tackle. Southern Lee had one blocker out. Before you knew it, one of the defenders had tried to turn and gave the offensive lineman his back, not on purpose, but if you're in that path, I'm sorry, I don't care what you do as a defender, you're going to get hit. And if you turn your back, well, then that's your fault. I, that's why I hate that, that right, call. Third and seven here. The hand is up the middle to Ingram. Oof, suspect play call on third and seven. They'll go backwards a yard. Fourth and eight coming inside Viking territory, but the punt team on the way out for Coach Neal and the Cavaliers. Clock running down close to nine minutes left in the third quarter. Um, well, you know, that run option team, you got to stay in front of the sticks. That's right. And when you get yourself in long down a distance, they went from second and 15 to third and a bunch. Um, tough. It's hard to come back from one. it. All right, Daniel Pisano handling all the kicking duties as he does. Suddenly having some difficulty getting the personnel grew out. They get it straight. Pisano takes a snap. A little bit.
bit of rush applied by Union Pines. Nice what a punt. kick. Looking for a good bounce and oh. doesn't get it as it skips into the end zone. So touchback Union Pines, and they'll take over first and 10, 8.39 to go in the third quarter, up 6-0 on these Cavaliers. Good punt, though, by Daniel Pisano. Had good hang time. Yeah. That was a good one. The cover crew, I think, lost it up there, didn't, didn't put a ton of effort into going down and blocking that ball. So might have outkicked his coverage a little bit. All right. Four wideouts, three wide left, one up top to the right for Rory Borg. Chandler in motion. Borg takes the snap, hands to Mick Tejera. Tejera spinning, fights forward for about five on the play. Nice hard run in there by Tejera, who didn't know he was going to be the starter until half an hour before the ball game. Woo. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Makes you wonder what, what the story is there. <laughs> All right. Board facing second and four here. Southern League coming out on a three-man front. Well, you know, it, you don't get too long into this when you start thinking about possessions here. You know, you got 20 minutes of game clock left. Southern Lee is going to run this thing methodically. Absolutely. Union Pines has been very methodical tonight. You got to start counting possessions, and every one of these is going to matter down the stretch here. And I know that's crazy to say less than half of the way through the third quarter, but we're, we're, we're getting there period. close. Yeah. So important possessions all here. This is a big third down for Union Pines as they look to keep this drive alive and keep the ball out of the Cavaliers' hands. Board drops, looking for Bobless. Bobless got spun around, looking for a flag's not going to no get it. No way. Um, not sure it wasn't because of miscommunication on the route. I think he was looking inside. Board was looking Board out. Board was looking outside. But uh, there was definitely contact there with the defender, but they will not get the flag, much to the chagrin of this highly educated home crowd for the Union Pine <laughs> Vikings. They know their football. All right, fourth and four. Union Pine's going to punt. Number two back, Mr. Kenny Palmer. I'm a, back I'm to a, field the punt. I'm a little surprised we don't see Fox or Lockley back to return this punt in this game situation. Maybe I'm I'm panicking a little bit. Rush applied by Southern Lee. Kick is out of there. It's gonna it's a short kick, gets a great bounce. And a roll dead at the 37 yard line where the Cavaliers will take over. I'm very interested to see the personnel coming off the sideline here. I've, I've asked Coach Neal before in some of my dealings and talkings with him. Tanoa Lockley has had a hard time in the past tracking the ball in the lights, and Southern Lee never practices under the lights. And so he has a hard time very, very finding and tracking the ball. And you know, as a punt returner, uh, that, that is key. Yeah. That is because it can get real ugly yeah, you real have to quick. Catch it first. All right. Locklear and Mays are the backs. The hand is to Locklear, who's up the middle. Dancing through traffic, takes on, still fighting. And they're going to mark him dead after about four yards. Never did touch the ground. A little upset that he wasn't allowed to pop out of there and keep running. But four yards on the carry, second and six coming. Mays the deep back now. And, you know, in this offense, what are we calling the lineup based on the spacing? What would you call the formation with McAllister relative to the center. Is this a shotgun? Is this a pistol? I, it's too deep to be a pistol in my mind. Pistol's three yards. Um, I think it's a full shotgun. Marshler again going to be close to a first down, about a foot short. I tell you, I don't like running that far deep out of four, four triple option because that means your second back is seven to eight deep. That's a lot seems, of yardage. Seems like to they're the ten of yards off the ball sometimes yeah. as deep as they get. It's it's a it's a long way to go. And, you know, anybody that's watched our coverage, even back when you were coaching, oh, um, that's heard me in short yardage, down and distance. Get under center. Get under center. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you, you, you're backing up, you know, eight yards off the line of scrimmage, like you said. That's a very long way to go. And, and as you see it, your tailback there is nearly nine yards from the line of scrimmage. All right, McAllister Rowland's got a man, throws it low. It's reeled in on first down. Going to pick up a couple there. Well, I tell you what, the previous play, they got a heck of a spot, Nate. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That was number 45, DJ Williams, sophomore on the catch there. 
I haven't heard his that, name yet this I'm, year. I'm still baffled by that spot. <laughs> um, I know what I saw. All right, 541 to go. Third quarter, Cavaliers on the move here. Second and six coming up. Locklear and Mays still in the backfield. To Noah Lockley, the lone receiver up top. Elijah Fox down here at the bottom. DJ Williams in as the H-back. All right, the hand is to Locklear, who's going to get a couple, bring up third and four. And this is what the Ooh. Cavaliers want to do is just churn. Big you know, third down here, though. When you're getting it three and four yards at a time, the, the problem, you know, comes down that you're always going to have to convert third downs. Well, this is as important a third down as the Cavaliers have seen tonight. We've got five minutes left in the, in the third quarter. This clock is ticking pretty quick here. We'll be home for dinner. Mmm. We just ate a great meal at the Union Pines concession stand, though, so I'm good. All right, McAllister hands to Locklear. Locklear got to get forward. And I think this time, even a good spot may not help him out enough. I don't know. The near side official, it's going to be really close. Looks Ooh. like it's going to be fourth and one here. All right. That spot didn't, didn't seem to sync with where the near side official was at. But, okay. So, fourth and a full yard. No hesitancy from Coach Ken Neal to punt the, this ball here. He understands the magnitude of, of this right. series. Union Pines, Union Pines crowding that A-gap. Southern going to run it right into that. No, they flip no, it outside to Mays. Mays has got a head of steam. He's going to have the ball out near the 30 with a first down. Needed a yard, got 15. I don't it mean goes to, out of bounds at the 32. He faked me. I, I thought I thought Locklear had the football. I don't mean to oversimplify things, but if Union Pines is going to put nine in the box right there, best thing to do. Go well, outside. That's that's kind of how it works. Go right? where they're not. <laughs> and McAllister hasn't been uh, hadn't been doing this a long time, but that's an easy read. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to know where that ball should have gone. All right. Lockley got single coverage, and the safety is a million miles from him. It would be hard for me not to go try to find him. That's what they're doing. Speak of the devil. Looky there. Fighting. Oh, oh to there it is. Again. And he oh, is. Oh, oh. That's a senior receiver right there that yeah. knows how to play this game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Unhappy folks in blue here. To Noah Lockley, you said there's nothing on the football field he can't do. He can pull flags. <laughs> yeah, he can pull a flag, too. That was, uh, that was masterful. I don't think that ball was catchable myself. But well, nonetheless, Zebra Crew threw it, so it first, is what it first is. First down's coming all shapes and sizes, Nate. That's right. Some cat no calls. child flags cat in high calls school. calls coming from Union Pines. Yeah, <laughs> that one wouldn't understand. that one wouldn't uh, stand up to very much scrutiny, I don't think. But Cavaliers into the Remax red zone. Four minutes left in the third quarter. DeAndre McAllister going to keep it himself. Gets four on first down. Ooh. Union Pines might have got away with a little bit of how'd late like hit that, there. How'd you like that soothsayer play call, though? Huh? I love it, dude. Well, I, I told you. Lockley had he had man coverage up there on top. And the safety sneaking down to the box. Lonnie Cox tired of getting run on up the middle. Well, you always say one day you're going to be a head football coach. Uh, that's so. my plan. One of these days. I told my wife I'm going to finish law school and go teach high school and coach high school football. That seems like a great use of all that money you're spending. <laughs> That's almost exactly <laughs> what she said, except you left out all the profanity. <laughs> no, I do not believe that Mr. Lambert put any profanity. Oh, in yes, that. she did. <laughs> second, <laughs> second and seven, McAllister stopped Going dead nowhere. in his tracks. Union Pines playing some defense right now, buddy. Third and eight coming up after they lose a yard there. Southern Lee here right. in the Remax red zone on the 16-yard line. Yeah, three and a half minutes to go. Very important possessions here. All right, so they get stopped. Kicking a field goal? Yes. Yes, taking points for the attempt of points. I'm with you. I think I would too. But I coached with Richard McCollum, who was good at 50. That's so. fact. <laughs> That's fact. I actually. Uh, oh, oh, my goodness. Wow, Union Pines with a chance to change this ball game. He had it. And put it away. Oh, unable to reel it in. Number Trevor Hyatt is going to lose sleep over that one. 
Oh, he'll be thinking about that one for a long time. Right. And DeAndre McAllister is going to go home and say a thank you and do a Hail Mary for uh, that ball being dropped. Yes, and right dead smack in the middle of the field, Daniel Pisano is going to come out to attempt the 31-yard field goal. It's still so tight. Look at him. It is I, so I've, never seen, I've never seen an alignment quite like that. And Pisano's kick is up. This time it is good. Drilled Not only it. looks good, but is signaled good. And with that, the Cavaliers cut this Union Pines lead in half. It's now 6-3 to go, or 6-3 to three with 3.06 to go. Try and do that a couple of Ooh. times. In the third quarter, I'm Chris DeLambert. This is Nathan Cochran. We'll be right back after this message with the kickoff. Saved by a P.I. call. All right. We're back. We're back. Three minutes and six seconds left in the third quarter. Nathan. Union Pines, you feel like if they can get another touchdown here, this ball game's over. Yes, and absolutely. And am I wrong there? Nope. I mean, obviously, it's football. Anything can happen. But Union Pines, if they can punch it in on this drive or the next, you got to like their chances. Southern, on the other hand, has been able to move the ball between the 10-yard lines. But once they get down there deep into Southern Pines territory, or Union Pines territory, um, three points tonight on three trips deep into the red zone. That's that's going to haunt them. Definitely. That's that's what keeps you up at night. Yeah. yeah. Some updates on scores around the conference. Lee County is now up against Hornet Central 21 to 10 in the third quarter. Back to a little bit of what we expected Lee County to do. All right, kick fielded on the run and Chandler will be corralled and run out of bounds at about the 34 yard line where Rory Board will lead the Union Pines offense back out onto the field. Got to give much praise to Mick Teixeira tonight, number two, the tailback, pressed into action. Um, the seniors, he's been a little bit of a Swiss Army knife for this offense last couple of years, but feature tailback not in his repertoire tonight, pressed into service, done an admirable, admirable job um, against a tough defensive front. Yeah, absolutely. This front line of Southern Lee is a pretty good, pretty daggum good squad. So to yeah. come out and have it showing he has, need right, to come in the young man. And looking for his receiver. Ooh. Can't connect. The young man's going to have nightmares about dropping that ball. Number 17, Holden Dahl on the attempt. So second and 10 and the clock stops here. Not what you're looking for. And I'm, I'm sure that Coach Cox and Mr. Dull and everybody associated with that play would tell you, probably catch that Probably one. need to catch that one. We haven't seen a whole lot of their star wide receiver tonight, Mr. Bobulus. No, nor Chandler. I mean, the passing game has sort of gone through Ahmad Jones. Uh, we did have the one big play to Bobulus where, you know, he ultimately fumbled it. Board being flushed, cuts it back up inside, chase down. Elijah Barrett's going to dump him. Right back at the line of scrimmage, third and ten coming up. Number 50, Elijah Bear. Barrett's a big man to be moving that Gosh, fast, I like that kid. The Kid's old, got a motor. Big old dancing bear. Quarterback scramble. Back to the line of scrimmage. First day he came into the, into the weight room as a freshman coming in after he gets out of middle school. We're maxing out in weights, and he says, Coach, let's go ahead and put 315 on there. And I thought, oh, okay, let's slow this down a little bit, young man. Slow let's, your roll there. let's start at 225, see where we're at. He said, I'll put 315. I thought, all right, well, I'm going to teach you a lesson. So we went ahead and put 315 on. Young man reps it. Nice. I said, well, makes me look like I got pie on my face. <laughs> all right, here comes the blitz. Oh, oh there it Barrett's is. There's him. Mr. Barrett again. And it's going to dump him back for a big loss. And that will force a Vikings punt with two minutes left in the third quarter. And that was a jailbreak. No kidding. Barrett, Barrett got coordinator. to come in and get the – he'll get it on the stat sheet. But boy, the pressure came from everywhere from the Cavaliers, and there's a Viking down. No, that's a Cavalier down. That's a Cavalier down. Stevie Cameron is down. 
number five linebacker for the Cavaliers. Coach Neal out there to check on him. Coach Cox, who knows all of these young men. Of course, he was on the Southern Lee staff last year from Union Pines. Coach Cox trots out onto the field to see if Cameron's okay. So let's talk about this coaching tree that sure. that is going on right now. So on the Union Pines sidelines, there are three former Southern League coaches. One of them has been there quite a while. He was a defensive backs coach, Mr. Terrell McKeever. He was coaching with Don Simon when I came on staff five or six years now, um, however long ago that was. Coach Lonnie Cox was an offensive coordinator for Coach Neal um, for a year, and his offensive coordinator was a quarterback's coach at Southern League, Coach Bleck. So definitely uh, this group is intertwined, to say the least. Just a, just a little extra riding on this game. Yeah. First, first year, you know, Coach Cox coaching under Coach Neal there as the offensive coordinator, you know. And a personal twist, I actually played with Terrell McKeever, the DB coach now. Oh, the for snap is high. Oh, Southern with Still not much of a rush on. Run. And fair catch at the 41-yard line. Southern, 143 to go in the third quarter. Needs to keep this momentum. Defense got him the ball right back. Um, from this spot on the field, we haven't seen much in the way of a a shot down the field. Yep. I'd look for one right now. I'd look for Tanoa Lockley right now. You know, that safety is tucking up into the box. And after the punt, Captain will take up a first and ten. We'll see. Not All really right. deciding where he no. wants to go. All right. Callister hands to Ingram. Ingram pushing the pile, pushing the pile, pushing the pile. Ball's oh, out. Oh, no. Great play there to push the defender off of it. Now I don't know at the end of the scrum. Lockley got down there with the Union Pines defender. Union Pines comes out of there with it. Oh, oh big boy. turnover for the Vikings. And we have got players looks down. Looks like Rodney Ingram is down. Ingram, who had been battling injury issues, is down. The Vikings also have a player down. So while they tend to the injuries, we'll take a break and give you an update as best we can on the other side. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week. It's my favorite time of the year. Football is back. I would like to personally invite you to come down for your next new or pre-owned vehicle purchase. With one of the largest new and pre-owned inventories in the area, come see us today for discounts that the competition simply can't match or beat. If you drive in Sanford, why not buy in Sanford? Come see me, the deal maker. Come and get that big town deal with that small town feel right here at Crossroads Ford in Sanford. 90 years ago, First Bank was founded. You know First Bank, the one where you are greeted by name, the one dedicated to the community, and the one born in the heart of the Carolinas. We help our customers to realize their dreams by providing financial solutions and building trusted relationships. Hi, I'm David Fischi, and we are First Bank. All right, welcome back to Cameron, North Carolina, home of the Union Pines Vikings. Um, Vikings players still down. Rodney Ingram was able to get up and walk off the field on his, on his, under his own power. Um, Nice gain on the play, fighting for extra yardage. Ball spit out, and uh, Union Pines able to come up with it after a scrum. We still haven't been able to identify the player that's down for the Vikings. He's been down there a while, though. Makes you nervous. I hate to speculate on what it could be, but. Yeah, no point in not, that. Not a good thing. All right. So, we were talking earlier about different mediums um most folks that <laughs> watch, <laughs> watch us with any with any regularity um know they can find me on radio monday mornings on wfj 105.5 fm uh from the cheap seats 9 to 11 on those monday mornings or you can find that as a podcast out there anywhere else on the internet so this week 
I was given a unique opportunity. Um, the Rant, which is a publication out of Sanford, North Carolina, which any, most people in the region are familiar with, um, asked me to come on their show. They have added – they just keep doing more and more. They started as a radio show. Yep. Then they became an online news service. Then they branched out and started doing print media in addition to the online news service. And now they have added a podcast to all of that. Um, and they asked me to come on and do a podcast with them uh, this Monday. And I had no idea what to expect. Boy, I tell you, Tashera's had some nice runs tonight. That's not one of them. This, this Southern League defense has decided they're going to win this ball game Absolutely. by themselves. Loss of a couple on the play. Kind spot by the referees when it was all said and done. Very kind spot. But, uh, yeah, the product of that podcast has been released on the world, and uh, I had no idea it was even out there, and I started getting calls from people who were like, man, that was good. They were very kind. Um, I had a chance to listen. We had a fun time doing with it. Doing it. Um, so what would you talk about? I mean, what, what were some of the topics? High football. school football. Yeah. Okay. We talked about from the cheap seats, where it came from. We talked about high school football. Um, oh, my God. Oh, oh, I tell you what. That was an interesting play. Elijah Fox thought he was going to get a pick and take it to the house. He had a – well, I hate to, I'm not going to say kill shot. He had a very open receiver that he could have demolished there and decided to go for the pick instead. Yep, and Chandler snatches it out of the air. And that will be another Vikings first down. They are going to have to run a play before the end of the third quarter here. But, no, we talked about from the cheap seats. We talked about high school football. Um, we have um, collaborated as the hand is to Teixeira stacked up yet again and going to lose a yard on the play. We've collaborated. We did a, I did a, uh, an interview with Lee County running back A.J. Bullware uh, that they committed to print, and uh, it went so well we thought we'd try it again. So injured quarterback for Southern Lee, Thomas Harrington, and his family were kind enough to sit down with me, and we did the same type thing, talked yeah. about the adversity that he's dealing with, and celebrated the fact that he's headed to Campbell on a baseball scholarship. And um, that will be coming out in print with the RAN as well. So, you know, a lot of sort of commingling right now going on. I, I will say, and I will say this on air, I don't care. The rant is my main source of information in all things Lee County and surrounding oh, wow. areas. All right. Um, I don't subscribe to our local newspaper. I probably should, but I don't. <laughs> And Gordon Anderson there at the rant is a very good friend of mine. I actually was talking to him last week about um, your partner in crime there on From the Cheap Seats, yeah. Brandon Atkins and his campaign. And yes, Gordon yes, is yes. running his campaign and Brandon, of everything is, that is entailed with that. Brandon, of course, is running for the city council, which is uh, voting is in full swing right now. Check. Done that. Good to go. Oh, very good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Went early one day. Sadly, he doesn't live in my ward, so I can't vote for him anymore. You, Anymore, you yeah, moved away right. from I us. I did, I did. Yeah. Us Ward Two guys, you moved away. All right, we're gonna change ends. Put 12 minutes on the clock. Time to play Let's some football, go. boys. All right, Vikings up six three. Second and eleven coming. Vikings in blue, moving left to right. Southern Lee trying to get this ball back and find another score some kind of way. All right, Ford takes a snap, drops, rolls, hits Chandler. Chandler puts a nice move on the defender and will be dragged down three yards short of the first down. Big third down coming up for UP. Any thoughts Ooh. here about going forward on fourth down if you don't pick it up, Nate? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Without a doubt, yes, right. absolutely. All right, third and three coming. Lonnie Cox yes. hoping he doesn't have to make that decision. You're in Southern Lee territory. Your defense has done a good job of stifling the Cavaliers. I've been very so far. impressed with with Ward's. Oh, oh you just wait and they'll give it to you. Getting a head start, jumps off sides, and that'll be a free Ooh. one for Union Pines at the worst time. All right, ball be spotted at the forty. That's a Pintair first down, Union Pines. And that clock is just a ticking. Tick tock, tick tock. It becomes your Worst friend when you're down and your best friend when you're up. All right. All right, here we go. First and ten. A touchdown here on this drive. Make it really tough 
Ahmad Jones reels it in. Going to be close to another first down, about a yard short. I was going to say a moment ago, Rory Board's composure in the pocket has been very impressive to me. Um, he goes back there and knows where that ball is headed. Yep. Uh, doesn't look like he's doing a lot of reading the defenses. He comes out and it, it seems like it's pre-programmed as to where that ball's headed. I will say he is reading the defense, but he's reading it pre-snap, finding the open spot, knowing where receiver is going to be and where's, where it's going to be open. All right, this time he'll hand it to Shara, and that's just not going anywhere. That's stopped at the line of scrimmage. Third and one coming up as to Shara can't get anything on the play. Something Elijah Barrett trying to atone for that offsides a moment ago. Something we haven't seen from the Cavaliers that we usually do, correct, correct my memory if it's incorrect, we haven't seen a Union Pines turnover tonight. Nope. And this Southern Southerly defense has historically. Well, yes, we, yes, we did. We had the Bobless fumble. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. We haven't seen I a pick, correct, though. We, and, and for a team to have thrown as much as Union Pines and Southerly not to have gotten a pick is a little surprising because those, those corners are something else. All right, Union Pines in absolutely no hurry. Play clock's at five. I think we're going to get a timeout here, and that's what yes. happens. Coach Cox runs it all the way down to a second on the play clock. Now he wants to talk about it. And while he does, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back on the other side. 9.48 to go here in Cameron. 6-3, Union Pines over Southern Lee. Right tech can move you. The best tech can move the world. De-stress your drive with the all-new 2019 Nissan Altima. Impossibly smart. All right, welcome back. Southern Lee trying to get off the field here. Third and one for the Vikings. Rory Board, you know, anytime they go into a timeout like that, I wonder what kind of mad science Lonnie Cox is cooking up. You think it's a something out of the box, or you think he's just talking about executing something that's within their normal repertoire? I think they're executing out of the normal repertoire. All right, here we go. Board drops. Going to throw. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Whoa. Dangerous that throw. That is a bit surprising. No hesitation. He had two plays called. Lonnie Cox, no hesitation. They're going for it on this fourth down. I tell you what, that was dangerous. Dangerous. Because there was nobody in between number two, Kenny Palmer, and that uh, end zone that he would have been trotting into. Looks like Union Pines is going to a power set here to try to convert this He's fourth down. He's going under center, Nate. He's going under center. All right. Board from under center, turns, hands to share first it. down. Union Pines keeps it moving down at the 27-yard line in some archaic formation I've never seen before there. <laughs> What's this new newfangled Oops. offense you're running here, Union Pines? was a two-back set with a, wing, with a tight wing, and it looked like it was just a wing lead play there. All right, here we go. Union Pines, three wide receivers out there. They keep that wing in the game. I love coming to Milk Union Pines listening to their band. All right, Teixeira breaks the first tackle, won't break the second, gets a couple. And Union Pines boot looking for a face mask, won't get it. Three on the carry for Union Pines. Tick tock, tick tock. That clock just keeps right on rolling. About eight and a half to go, and and board. This is what senior quarterbacks do. You know, I'm sure he's taking his guidance from the sideline, but he's watching that play clock and getting it down inside three before he snaps the football. Game management is Taken. a huge part that a senior quarterback should do incredibly well, and Mr. Board has done that so far tonight. Second and seven. Hands to share. To share. Cuts it outside. Going to have another first down, and ah, uh, drags that and last tackler. And we got a horse. So you got a down to the two-yard line. You got a horse collar that's going to take it half the way home. So the ball's going to be at the one. Wow. Actually, they're spotting it inside the one. So after this penalty, 
that ball literally is going to be up against the yeah again against the goal line. So do we see the heavy set again? Why I would. I mean, they didn't I do anything would. like. I mean, not only do you not see it, you've never defended that. How many of these nope. defenders have ever seen somebody run a play from under center? Nope. Um, it's been a long time. And do you see who that wing back is that they're using for a lead? Number 69, our man. Holden Grainer. Holden Grainer, our man. All right. And if I was going to have someone leading up a hole, he would probably first, be the one I'd want. First and goal from inside the one. Board just going to keep it. Plows forward. Touchdown, Vikings. In. It is 12-3 with 8-10 to go in the ballgame. Southern Lee is in a very dangerous spot. Ooh. Union Pines. Long drive. Done. Long drive, burned clock, getting it done. Well done by Coach Lonnie Cox's offense there. You'll remember, Nate, Lee County used to do that same thing in short yardage yep. situations under Coach Burton Cates. And you would only see it in short yardage packages, and they would bring a whole new personnel group in, yep. and nobody could stop it. They used to run that, and they made a living off of it. Anytime they were within the five-yard line, you saw Jory Perkins get under center. Larry Baldwin would come Larry into the Baldwin game. Larry Baldwin would come in, yep. And they made a strong living doing that. Looks like we're going to have a, a delay a game. On Union Pines. Oh, we got they, he, Coach Cox got a timeout. All right, they got the timeout before the the two point attempt. All right, your, your coach Neil. What do you do here? We we talked it. Spread them out. Take some chances. But with a junior quarterback who hasn't thrown the ball incredibly well tonight, you're in a bad spot. You're in, you're. Backs against the wall, and who you have throwing the ball is not giving you the most confidence tonight. In a bad spot for the Cavaliers right now. But I'm sure Coach Neal has something in his repertoire ready to rock and roll with it. Well, as we say back home, we about to find out. We about to find out. <laughs> Which home would that be? Mississippi. Mississippi, all right. Chris is and his world travels. You never quite know which home he's you talking don't. about. You don't. At this point in life, North Carolina is most definitely home. <laughs> Although I uh, I still am a property taxpayer in Mississippi, so there you go. Hey, there you go. Are you a slumlord? <laughs> no, I, I got a got a relatively nice residential spot out there I rent. So. There you go. Update from our crosstown rivals there, Lee County. They're up on Hornet Central 28 to 10. So Lee County back in the driver's seat. All right, and here, Union Pines trying to take uh, second place in the Tri-County Six by a by the throat. Oh, by, yeah, a I'll solid. What. Short of them dropping a game to some of the Hornet County schools left, which I don't foresee happening. That they're, they're second, and there's nothing Southern Lee can do about it if they pull this game out yeah, tonight. They, you know, they took the L to Lee County, but they beat Triton. Yep. Um, and now with a win at Southern Lee, you know, Harnett Central and Western, Western Harnett, obviously you have to win those games. Yep. But uh, you like Union Pines' chances in those. And, you know, if you, you told Coach Cox second place in the conference in your opening year. That's pretty daggum second, good. Without any, any second thought. And if they win tonight, they'll be six and three. You anticipate them going on and winning the next two games, 8-3 for reporting purposes to the state since they played an endowment game. They'll be 8-2. And, and if I'm not that's mistaken. That's a home playoff game, buddy. That's a home playoff game. And according to Coach Cox, Union Pines has never hosted a home playoff game. That would not surprise me. And and with what they're able to turn out here as a community, oh, put oh. down. Oof. Chandler probably should have come up with that. Instead, it's 12-3, really no harm done there. Still a two-possession ball game. I tell you what, if I was a first-round, a prospective first-round opponent coming into Union Pines, scary. I can think of a thousand places I'd rather go. This place will be on fire. Absolutely. Now we've gotten like a month ahead of ourselves, but you have to be thinking about these. But things. it's really not that far, it really though. Isn't. It's really not. We have two weeks left in regular season after tonight, and then it's playoff time, yeah. baby. And playoff football is. Oh, I love playoff. Yes, football. sir. We, of course, will be here through the playoffs. Um, 
maybe as far as the state play or the uh, state championship. We, we'll see how things shake out. Well, we keep hosting the NFHS game of the week for the state of North Carolina. Let's just keep bumping that trend all the way Sounds up. Sounds like a good plan, sir. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. All right, Union Pines kick off 8-10 left. Southern Lee in need of a minor miracle, perhaps. But with this back three that Southern Lee has on this kickoff, Union Pines has to be very careful yes, here because that could flip a game a, real that's quick. That's a pretty athletic group back there. And Instead, they do. You, get a, you get a squib kick that I don't know if Southern that Lee got like on That looks like a 50-50 ball. And they did not. Oh, my Union goodness. Union Pines got to that. Oh, my. Southern and Lee has completely come unraveled. probably – your football game. Oh, no, the official signaling Southern Lee oh, ball. Oh, my goodness. Oh. The Union Pine squad hasn't figured it out. Um. Oh, ho, ho, ho. No, they're going to give it to Southern Lee. Wow. Wow. That was a 50-50 ball, and I didn't have a good look, Chris, so. The Union Pines players certainly thought that they had come up with it. If Southern Lee was smart here, they'd snap this ball because Union well, Pines they has start, way. They, they, haven't, they haven't blown it in play yet. There you go. You know. Southern Lee coming out in a shotgun right. doubles Cowster. formation. Looking, got to Noah Lockley wide open. A busted coverage. Wow. That? Wow. Now, Tanoa Lockley is a ball player who is perfectly capable of blowing a ball game open. There that's it was. just a blown coverage. That was a blown coverage. Right up the field, had to sit down, make a sandwich, and wait on that ball to get to him, <laughs> and runs it on into the end zone. So one play suddenly, just like that, right back in this thing. 12-9 is the score, 755. That took all the 15 seconds from the time Union Pines lined up to kick that ball off. And you have to wonder if Union Pines was a little hungover from the uh, – questionable kickoff there. All right. Pisano wanted to add the extra point. Kick is up. Kick is good. 12-10 is the score. 7.55 to go in the ball game. We thought Southern Lee might be dead. Ken Alive said, again. Let me tell you something, <laughs> brother. <laughs> alive again. They are alive and well. And uh, this is a barn burner at this point. All right. We'll take a quick break, be back with the kickoff, see what Union Pines answers with. 90 years ago, First Bank was founded. You know First Bank, the one where you are greeted by name, the one dedicated to the community, and the one born in the heart of the Carolinas. We help our customers to realize their dreams by providing financial solutions and building trusted relationships. Hi, I'm David Fischie, and we are First Bank. All right, welcome back. You know, we were talking during the break. It, it looked like the Union Pines defense had Lockley accounted for all night. Uh, he got a little bit of special attention, but on that first play after the kick, they lost track of him. And you do that to your peril. He is a young man. I have told this story many times. The first time I saw him play was his first game on varsity. He wasn't on our rosters. Midway through his freshman year. Never heard his name. And he caught that first pass and put a couple of moves. And it was probably only a six or a seven yard gain. But the explosiveness just jumped off the screen at us. Yep. And uh, I knew he'd be a special talent, and he has been. Been a great four-year career for a, a guy that is a legit two-way star. Now the question becomes, does he get to play on Saturday? Where does he go? And that question hadn't been answered yet. Uh, I know that there have been conversations with App. I know that as late as last week, there was a conversation with UNC Central. Oh, wow. So we shall see. But where he's going to play his football on Saturdays hasn't been sorted out. Um, he's going to be a credit to a program somewhere. All right, first down carry by Teixeira. Picks up half a yard. We're going to see a lot of clock burning here from the Union Pines Vikings. Try to eat that clock. Got a seven and a half left in this ball game. Well, 
I, I'd like to see Coach Cox not play to. Don't play to lose, play yeah, to win. Don't play to not lose. You know what I mean? That's not in his character anyway. No. I would be interested to see what the time of possession is at the end of this ball game. I'd bet Union Pines has had this ball 75% of the game. You might be right. All right, Tejera into the line, nothing. Nothing at all. Swallowed up by that Cavalier defensive front. Big, big third down here for the Vikings. All the momentum swing seems to be going to Cavaliers way at the moment. John Wilson just destroyed that football play. Oh, I like that kid. He tore it into like eight pieces, threw it on the ground, and set it on fire. And he's a sophomore. I know. And he is a sophomore. And this is a school that has punched. There have been some big time linebackers come oh, through this yeah. program. Quentin Locklear, Caleb Medlock. Sergio Gardner. Sergio. Oof. Oh, man. And John Wilson might end up being the best of the bunch. All right. Ford fakes, throws, got Whoa. a man. Bounces off of a tackle, and he's going to the house. And he is gone. Is that Archie Chandler? Six, Union Pines. Stretches that lead out to 18-10. You got to wrap up. Got to wrap. You're right. You got to wrap up. As good as we talked about the tackling from reception. Union Pines. Bad tackling in the secondary, and Archie Chandler ran away from the defense. That is a big touchdown for UP. Now, looking forward, this is a really, really oh, big yes conversion because that's the difference between a one possession, two possession ball game. All right, 18-10 is the score. Coach Cox not showing any. Be interested to see if they come back out in that heavy package where Coach, Southern Lee Coach has Cox not stopped. Coach Cox doesn't feel like he can protect the kick. And I told you there was an injury with the kicker. So rather than put his kicking team onto the field, he's going to go for it. In no other situation would this make sense. We got trips to the and right there's a false and a start. false start. And that'll back him up to the eight-yard line. And we'll, this makes the call even more interesting. Nope, going to keep the offense on the field and go for two from the eight-yard line. Up eight going for two. In no other Ew. circumstance ever does this make any sense. No. All right. Nope. Nice. Here comes this the This looks like a. Yeah, you know, it's kicking team is coming out. Team. Okay. That is the kicking team. Number 34 is the kicker. Tamaris Andrews. <laughs> what? We got that backwards. Oh, sorry. That oh, was it's blocked. And in high school, you cannot return the kick. So Coach Cox was worried about the ability to protect in the kicking game and was we, not. We were looking at the wrong yes, roster. We were. <laughs> we were looking at Southern Lee roster. That was kicker number 34, Sean Blatz yep. from the Union Pines Vikings. Protection was lackluster to say the least. Yep. Southern really got after that and keeps this a one-score game. 6-14 to go. Oof. As All boring. of a sudden. You know what? I hate to say a game was boring, but the first half of this game was, was boring. Boring, yeah. This has been awesome. This has been amazing. Past four minutes have been phenomenal. Our, our cameraman, Terry McMillan, just looked at me like I was blaming him for the first half being boring. <laughs> no. All right. We would like to say thank you to our production crew tonight. Our man Terry McMillan on the camera. Win Crazily down there in the. In Win the, Crazily down. In the trailer. In the trailer. In the trailer. We thing. love it. He's got the display screen out there. The kids were out there checking it out when we went down at halftime. It's pretty wild. All right. UP to kick it away. Another onside-ish type Oh, dangerous kick. ball. And fielded this time cleanly by Southern Lee at the 29-yard line. They, they haven't handled Gosh, that well. No, they have not. That will be a... Large focal point for the Cavaliers going into Monday's practice, I'm sure. If they don't regularly do a special teams period, they're going to do one on Monday, I'm right. sure. First and 10, down eight with 6-10 to go in the ball game. Last time Southern had the ball, they threw it over the top to Tanoa Lockley, who beat a blown coverage for six. It was that simple. Um, Got to think there's zero chance of them losing track. In fact, Union Pines for the first time tonight, Playing with two high safety look. 
Uh, they'll throw underneath it as McAllister finds his man for 17 at a Southern Lee first down. That was number two, Kenyon Palmer. We've called his name a lot tonight. Not a young man who shows up on a ton of stat sheets, but he has been all over the, all around the ball tonight. Yes, he has. All right, first down just short of midfield here for the Cavaliers. DeAndre McAllister takes the snap, drops, looking down the middle. Had E.J. Fox wide open and oh, missed Oh, he's got to hit that young man. Oof. But we do have a box a bit frustrated hat on Locklear. the field. Locklear Probably went out of the bounds. Target. Yeah, the hat means that he went out of bounds and came back in. Uh, but yeah, had EJ Fox down the seam for big yardage and didn't see him as he rolled to his right. Bring up second and ten for the Cavaliers. Second and ten coming up. Just inside of six minutes and whistle blows. Now looking to worrying about the play clock. The play clock again. Clock is started by the referee. McAllister takes a look at the defense. There's a snap, drops, and has a man. Oh. And the defender flashed right in front of that and probably was the difference. Palmer puts it on the ground. Third and 10 coming up for the Cavaliers. The young man needs to catch the ball with his hands, not his chest plate of his pads. Four down territory, Nate? Without a doubt. All right, Without third a doubt. and 10 coming up. Cavaliers look to have eschewed their normal run option offense in, in favor of a more air raid look. Lockley in the defensive secondary coming off the field slowly. Strange. Not, not a good thing for this Cavalier offense as he makes his way to the sideline. Both teams still have all three of their timeouts. Right, trips to the wide side of the field. All right, gets it out to Fox. Fox trying to make some ha something happen. Spins out of a tackle. Whoa. He's got a left sideline. He side is line. gone. The Cavaliers he are is gone. Score. Touchdown, Touchdown. Cavaliers. Woo. EJ Fox all by himself. What a play by number four, EJ Caught Fox that there. that thing five yards short of the first down and looked like there was no chance of picking it up. Spins out of a tackle. Touchdown. Hits the sideline, puts it into fifth gear, and has the Cavaliers within two, five and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Wow. Where has this been all night, Chris? Where has this excitement and explosiveness been all night? All right, two point conversion attempt coming for the Cavaliers. Huge, Huge. play. This Huge. is to tie the ball game, five and a half to go. They're showing a different look than we've seen all night. Two backs with McAllister, only one receiver out there. Snap is low. They're going to blow a timeout. timeout with Coach Neal, and he is screaming at the official. I guess tried to get the timeout earlier. Ultimately, they get the call, and they will have a chance to talk about it. We'll take a breath and be back with the Ooh. conversion attempt after this quick break. <laughs> With every weekend on the go, uh, we never know where we're going to end up. That's why we got the Ford Explorer. You get the feel of a car with the room and space of an SUV, which is all a bonus. Trips to the mountains, trips to the river. Soccer games, baseball games, anywhere. Big Bear. After 13, 14 years of having a Toyota, I'm not going back. Welcome back to the NFHS Game of the Week. I'm Kristen Lambert, Nathan Cochran. You know, this thing started slow, but, buddy, we've got ourselves a barn burner. 16 points scored by this Cavalier offense, but it seems like an explosion over the last couple of minutes. Some excitement in a game that was devoid of it early on. All right. And excitement on both sides. Usually when you For see sure. something like this hit fourth quarter, one team has exploded, the other one's fallen over. Both of these teams have come out All punching right, two hard. Two-point conversion attempt here to tie this thing. McAllister takes rolls. He's got looking, a man. And going to be tackled. Oh, he had Great to get rid of that ball. on the edge. And is stopped. That's got to be Holden Grainer. I don't even need to see the number. It is. It is. It is. Saves the day temporarily for the Vikings. And keeps the two-point lead intact. 18-16 Vikings. 539. 
And Lonnie Cox, I agree now. He's got my all-conference vote. Period. On Grainer? Absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. What a, what a big play. Is an enormous play. McAllister's wow. not a typical quarterback rolling to his right. That kid can run. Yes, he can. And Grainer took the angle, got his head out in front of the body, and snuffed the whole thing out. And McAllister had receivers in the end zone in the direction that he was rolling to, chose to keep it. Junior quarterback, not a lot of snaps. That one, that one might come back to haunt him. All right, here we go. Plenty of, plenty of football left, though. 5.39 to go. Southern Lee kicking off. With the, with the way they're moving the ball right now, all they need is a couple of seconds. So uh, <laughs> we, we got us a ball game. Yeah, we do. All right, Daniel Pisano on to kick it off. Union Ponds has employed that little onside squibber that's given Southern Lee all, the, all of that trouble. No such trouble in the Union Pines return game tonight. Union Pines leaving a huge hole there right about the 30-yard line. Let's see what the Cavs do with this. Here we go. Nope, we had offsides. A high spinner, whistled dead. We had offsides on the kicking team. We'll back them up. And he wasn't even close to being on side. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that one was obvious. All right, we'll back it up, kick it from the 35. Mm. Suddenly, a little bit of shooting themselves in the foot right then. Yes, sir. Daniel Pisano has had a good night kicking. He had the missed field goal after he at, made, the after he field made goal. one. Yep. That was called back due to a reset of a play clock. How many points is the field goal worth? Three. What's the margin of two? Yeah. Just that saying. Could be the difference. All right, Pisano. High spin and short kick way for a fair that. catch. And caught. Brought in there. Nice play. Kaitlin St. John. Union Pines will take over on their own 41-yard line. All right. This explosiveness we've seen from Union Pines, though, I wouldn't be surprised if they put up another touchdown on this drive. Quick, who knows? Yeah, who knows? All right. We got trips to the wide side coming to us. Rory Board, the senior quarterback from the gun, hands inside. That's Micah Tejera. Oh, Tejera boy, into he's the got secondary. room. And his biggest run of the night, he goes for 23. Call it 26 on the play, down to the 31. Wow. That's not something we've seen a lot of tonight. No, just a simple belly play. Mm. Southern Lee sent the blitz in the opposite B gap. All right, so first and 10, Union Pines, 522 and running. We've seen Board milk this play clock for as much as he can get out of it. I like this kid. Yeah. All right. The hand is to Tejera again. Oh, ball's out. Southern Lee ball. That's going Cavalier. Southern Lee ball. Southern Lee going to take over on the 29 yard that line. Fumble, Nate? Number 44, of John Wilson. John Wilson. That man is on fire. John Wilson comes up, knocks it out, and the Cavaliers have this thing with 5.05 to go, down two. Wow. What a what a chain of events there, Chris. Yes, sir. Big play. Union Pines has all the momentum. Mr. Wilson coming in, sophomore linebacker, makes a play. I love it. Southern Lee coming back out in their spread offense. We got a weird trips little, formation. Little confusion in the secondary. McAllister takes it, swings it out to Lockley. Lockley going to cut it back up inside, spins out, and will be brought down for a loss on the play. Ooh. And they ran that a couple times That's in the first half, and it's just a weird look. Yeah. He's good. Lockley's cramping. He's been cramping for the last 20 minutes or so. And they're trying to stretch him out. 
Referees get the player away from him. Got the training staff coming out who are going to do exactly what the player was doing, stretching that, <laughs> bending that toe back. It's the telltale sign of cramps. Southern League getting an impromptu timeout here without they having are, to burn maybe one. Maybe not a bad thing. Second and 12 coming up. While they stretch out Lockley, we'll take a quick break. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week for the entire state of North Carolina right here from Cameron, North Carolina. Um, now we're going to stay here. Looks like Lockley's going to be able to run across the field. Oh, no break coming. Dropped a mouthpiece. Left his mouthpiece. Got to have those. All right, here we go. 449. Be interesting to see with, with Lockley out, does well, suddenly come back out. Fox is such dynamic well, Fox, receiver, though. Lockley was out of the game. Fox on took Fox one touchdown. to the house. Yes. That's right. And, and, you know, Lockley is the guy that's been doing it for a very long time. Lockley only a marginally more explosive than Elijah Fox, who is a heck of an athlete. I think Lockley's a little bit faster on the step, and I think that's the difference. All right. McAllister rolls right and throws Ooh, through that thing up. late. Going to get positive yardage out of that as he completes the pass. So third and eight coming up, but I tell you, that ball came out late, yes. late, late, late. The for the Vegas, number five, TJ Small. If you're going to hold that ball that late, it really needs to be a route of like a hitch and go. Yep. Brendan Evans with his first catch of the hey, night. Let me hear you out there, Vegas. Come on now. you got to get behind right, clock, boys. clock definitely an issue now. Down four minutes. Probably four down territory here, but the Cavaliers trying to convert on, and not have to make that decision. This crowd is loud, buddy. McAllister drops, looks, plenty of time, and throws across his body oh. and got away with one. Whoa, what a terrible that decision. should have been going to the house the other way. Boy, that's the, the unforgivable. Oh. Sit Roll right runway, there. throw across Yikes. your body, across field. That is quarterbacking 101. Do not do. Ever. Ever, under any circumstance, period, there's, end of discussion. There's some cat down there in Kansas City that I think might be allowed to do that. Yeah, but who's out right now? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but who's out right now? Man. All right, fourth down coming for the Cavs. 3.47 to go. Need a first down here. And looking down the field, throws oh. that thing a mile into the air for Lockley and throws it that out of bounds. you got to oh give him a goodness. chance. Almost like it slipped out of his hand. So you've got a turnover, Ooh, turnover on, on down. downs. 3.40 to go. Southern Lee needed a first down and was unable to come up in the moment. So now Union Pines with a chance to take some serious time off the clock. If you're Coach Ken Neal, it's not quite time to start burning timeouts, but Union Pines gets one or two first downs. It's going to be getting there pretty quick. All right. Scoreboard says Southern has three I timeouts they left. They have two. Yeah. They called All one right. on the two-point conversion. They did. Board from the gun. Hands to Teixeira. Teixeira stuffed in the backfield. Nothing. Loses the yard, second and 11 coming up, and there's that first time out for Coach Neal. 3.34 to go. This will be a quick break. While they talk about it, we'll take a quick break. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with Remax Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. All right, welcome back. Union Pine Vikings trying to hold on here, up 18-6. This would be an enormous win for first-year coach Lonnie Cox in this Vikings program, looking to go to 6-3 and three and put a chokehold on second place in the Tri-County 6 Conference. Southern trying to keep their conference championship hopes alive. Need a stop. Second and 11 
3.34 left. They got to get this ball back over into their offense's hands. Board from the gun, takes the snap, going to keep it up the middle. He's got the first down. Big play by Board as he carries it all the way down to the 10 with three and a half minutes to go. That's a first down. Ooh, and now it's Board. getting really tough. All right. Clock stops until the chains are set. Now it's rolling again. By the time this ball is snapped, we'll be down inside 240. Union Pines can pick up a first down without scoring here. First and 10 from the 11 inside the Remax red zone for the Vikings. If you're Union Pines here, you punch it in. Board kicking a field goal. Going to be stuffed in the backfield by that Cavalier front who's going to burn their last time out, it looks like. Well, yes. 12. Yes. All right, so second and 12, Cavaliers burn their final timeout. We say that. The, we say final timeout. The scoreboard hasn't been updated. But uh, I'm 100% certain that was yeah, three. That's it. All right, so second and 12, 247 left in the ball game. Ooh. Any chance Union Pines puts the ball in the air here? No. I want it. You got to think no. I want it. You know, worst case scenario, if you run this ball three more times and turn it over on downs, Southern Lee's got to go the length of the field with no timeouts. And no chance am I putting this thing in the air. Nope. In a minute and 40 seconds, roughly. And the other question, we saw this, and we knew coming in, Union Pines concerned about protecting in the kicking game. I don't think there's any chance they no. attempt a field goal here. No. You're just asking for trouble. That's right. A block, scoop, snatch, touchdown. Because it would be a live play yes. since it's not a PAT. Yes. So. All right, board from the gun, looking to get six and make all this moot. Runs to share up the middle. Nope, board follows. Nope, Teixeira had it. Teixeira Ford had it. followed him. And, and Neither one of them went anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so third and long here. Clock inside two and a half minutes. Third this ball will be snapped and 12. With about 2.01 left. All right. Not sure Coach Cox is not going to get a timeout here. Ah, don't. don't. No, nope, he's going to keep him out there. All right. Southern playing straight man across the board. Everybody else in the box. Third and 12 coming. Board from the gun. Takes the snap. Blitz comes. Got board. Backed him up. Ripping at the football. Can't get it out of there. Fourth and 11. Maybe down. Oh, they're going to mark it back at the line of scrimmage. Fourth and 12 here. 152 to go. 34 seconds on the play clock, and it is ticking, and it is ticking. All right, fast. you're going to have 116 left when this play clock expires. This time, Coach Cox is going to get a timeout here. He's going to let this run down to one on the play clock and get a timeout. And be interested to see what he pulls out of his hat. Unless they convert, Southern Lee is going to get the ball back with over a minute to go. And 86 yards to go right However, now. comma, the two plays that they have scored on in this second half have, have been, been big, big could have been from 300 yards away. That's right. Um, you know, you had guys running away from the defense. So, Southern Lee's going to get a chance to make one more big play. Timeout taken here by the Vikings. 117 to go. The Union Pine Vikings have called timeout to talk this over. Now, do you put the ball in the air? Yes. yes, absolutely. Why not? I agree. Now, saying that, I put it I put it in the air over the middle, not to the outside of the field. Okay, why? Because that's where you open up a chance for somebody to undercut a route and take it the other direction. In the middle of the field, you've got 11 guys that they have to get past. So I would throw it into the end zone. For, for me, I'd, I'd run a stick route. I'd run it all the way to that back. Fair enough. Back pylon. I, I got to tell your quarterback, senior quarterback, put that ball either in the receiver's basket or out of bounds. I'm and with that's, that would be my thought process here. 
Six or a half dozen. I got it. I got a skinny post running out of the slot into the end zone. There you that, go. That's my call. All right. And if you pick it off, great. Yeah. But I would not try to do anything to the outside short of the end zone. I guess I should. No, yeah, no, I wouldn't do that either. You're exactly right. All right, here we go. Archie Chandler is lined up in the slot. That's my prediction here. Fakes, throws, there it is, incomplete. That's exactly what I would have run. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Maybe you should be calling offense. Maybe I, I should be. I should it. All right, so Southern Lee is going to get it back. 113 to go going the other way. And, you know, Southern Lee, what you, they like to run throughout the course of a game is a grinded out offense. They do, however, have some very explosive athletes, and we've seen them on display to Noah Lockley and Elijah Fox, both with long touchdowns. Lockley is back into the game after cramping. He and Fox are both to the right side of the field. Number nine, Brendan Evans. DeAndre McAllister takes, gets it out quickly. That's Lockley. Lockley cuts it out of bounds, going to come up just short of the first down, but positive yardage on first down has eight out to the 22-yard line. Second and short coming up. That pass complete to number three, Noah Lockley. And I tell you, I would send Elijah Fox down the seam this time, or any of those receivers, okay. down the seam, okay. and take a shot, and if it's not there, just throw it into the ground. Here we go. DeAndre McAllister, junior quarterback, making his second start ever. Takes the snap, drops, looking right, has, has a man. Kenyon and Palmer. Kenyon Palmer going to take right it out, out of bounds. And if Union Pines is going to keep giving them that, keep they're going to keep it. taking it. That play took four seconds, Chris. Moving the sticks right on. Union Pines might need to buckle down a little bit closer, take away that mid-range game. All right. But it scares you. You're right with the over-the-top threat with E.J. Fox and to know who could outrun everybody on this Union, Times, Union Pines ball club. All right, McAllister from the gun, takes a snap. Looking across the middle, he's got his man. There's and Kenyon Palmer again. Palmer coming up big in this second half, out to the 46-yard line, 57 seconds to go. Clock will stop for the chains to set. Fox a little slow getting to the line. He's come on, the clock is running. McAllister takes a snap, rolls right, and great job of throwing it away there. That's a good decision no. by the junior. No, no there's a the receiver. Pocket. What are you doing? They're going to talk about this. They can't call that grounding. He was out of the pocket, and there was a receiver in the vicinity. No way. White Hat, put the yellow flag back in your pocket. That's not your call to make to begin with. This is, oh, my gosh. Intentional, that's terrible. Wow. That is a terrible call by White Hat. Wow. And that's a loss of down to go with from the spot. That's a that's a brutal call. All right. So they're going to wind this clock now. The Cavaliers need to be prepared to snap this ball. 46 seconds to go. And the clock is wound. McAllister looking, scrambles. Got to make a play. And hurls it down the field. He's got Elijah Fox. Elijah oh, Fox. Yes. Catches it at the twin fifty. He's going. Elijah He's Fox. going. Top shot. What did we just do? What a play. 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 Uh, play. DeAndre play. McCallum. I see no flag. Oh, we got a flag. We got a flag on the far side on the six-yard line. What is the call? We have no football. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. We got live. Oh. Wow. Is this a post possession foul? It is. The touchdown's going to stand Elijah Oh, Fox. my goodness. What Found a play. His way behind what the Union Park secondary. What DeAndre a play by McAllister the young man. Was just trying to get rid down of it. on. Wow. Unbelievable. Daniel Pisano on to stretch the lead. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. I, I love high school football. <laughs> Snap is down. Kick is up. Kick is good. Oh, my goodness. Southern oh, Lee. No. 
23, Union Pines 18, 33 seconds to go. What a ball game. Wow. Wow. Two Union Pines defenders in position to make the tackle, inbounds to keep burning clock. Couldn't make it. EJ Fox burns them. Wow. Wow. Conference championship. Still alive, in play still Southern, in play at the moment. But they've got to get through the next 33 seconds. Coach Cox been punched in the gut here. Wow. What a chain of events. Holy cow. DeAndre McAllister getting bored down on by the Union Pines defense. Heaves it up. That's, that's a prayer. That's a prayer ball that just fell right into the lap of EJ Fox. And playmakers make play. Elijah Fox, we've talked about him all night, has stepped up and had the game of his career. Oh, my goodness. And that's a play you'll never forget. Unbelievable. Pisano to kick this off, 33 seconds to go. What else can happen? It's a high spinner. No fair catch. No play. fair catch. Going to be returned. Burning up clock. Clock down inside 28 seconds by the time the ball carriers hauled down at the 35. All right, Union Pines now. If you're the Union clock Pines is there, their enemy. No kidding. How the times can change so quickly. Southern Lee got to stay focused here on defense. Union Pines looking to make a big play. They've got their athletes of their own. And if you're going to score with 27 and a half seconds left, this is the offense that can do it. So be interested to see. All right. We got Ford, trips the senior, to the wide side. The senior quarterback takes the snap, drops, eludes the rush, gets it out there, hangs it up. Big play by EJ Big Fox. Play, no flag. Union Pine sideline looking for a flag. <laughs> Woo, 21 and a half seconds left, second down for the Vikings. Oh, man. Second and 10, 21 seconds to go. No timeouts for Union Pines either now. So you've got to figure out how you're going to stop this clock after a completion. We saw Southern able to get out of bounds on a couple of successive plays. Ford drops, rush in his face. There's calls that your screen. tunnel. There's the screen, plenty of space for Bobus. Bobus gets to the outside. They're chasing him down, but not until he's down to the 33-yard line. Clock stopped, 11 seconds to go. Union Pines still has life. Still alive. We haven't seen Tunnel all, all night. Day. Perfect play call for Coach Cox and his offense They're gonna here. They're going to mark him out at the 36-yard line, 11 and a half seconds to go. Plenty of time to run two or three plays here if you get to the sideline. Keep in mind, Union Pines has no timeouts. They'll get a stoppage with a first down, but it's quick. Here comes the rush. Board down the sideline. Has a man. Oh, Rosen. my goodness. Touchdown, Touchdown Vikings. Touchdown, Oh, my Pines. goodness. With three seconds to go wow. on the clock. Wow. We got a flag on the Vikings, but it doesn't matter. Union Pines Holy pulls a cow. rabbit out of their hat, and the Vikings score down the sideline on a 36-yard hookup. Rory Board, you're a magician. Wow. When we thought this ball game was that, Union Pines, Coach Cox and his crew comes out, throws a haymaker to the Cavaliers. Throws a haymaker. What a hookup. Good coverage there by the Cavaliers. Number two, Kenyon Palmer just couldn't make a play. Union Pines, 24. Southern Lee, 23. Union Pines will go for two again. Wow. Three seconds to go. Talk about momentum swings. Board, looking across the middle, now rolls, throws. Incomplete, one point game, doesn't mean much. Wow, nope. Three and a half seconds to go for Southern Lee. If you're Southern Lee, you fair catch this, this 
kickoff. Well, Union Pines and, hasn't and even he, given him that opportunity well, on the last true. couple kicks. Wow, Chris. Just soaking it in. Wow. Man. Just soaking it in. This has been amazing. All right, Southern Ooh. Lee rolling out the, the return team. A lot of athletes, but they've got those athletes deep. I wonder, in anticipation of this little spinning kick they've done, if you try to run a series of laterals and turn this last play into a rugby-style rugby, rugby style play. What do you think, Nate? Unless you practice it, I don't think so. All right, here comes the kick. Southern Lee, first of all, needs to field this kick. They go the other way. Ball is fielded. That's the ball game. Union and Pines is your wins. Ball game. The Vikings get out of here with a minor miracle. Oh, we have, have a flag. flag. We have a flag, flag on the Vikings. Play. Off. It'll be an offside. Got offside. Got to Lee redo it. Their heads back. No. We've got a flag. They're not calling it. Officials are calling it. Wow. Welcome to the First Bank Post Game Show. Amazing. And a huge program win for Union Pines. That's right. Coach Lonnie Cox putting his stamp on this program. This is one that changes the culture. Absolutely. This is a game that you can hang your hat on and say, I'm doing a good job. So, and I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but as a coach, you, you question that every week. Are you doing the right things? <laughs> coach Lonnie Cox here at Union Pines, absolutely doing the right thing. This has been amazing. And uh, this is a game we won't soon forget. I said coming in, this might be the most important game played in the Tri-County Conference 6. At this point, it looks like it has been. Yes, sir. Southern Lee can still get to second place. Conceivably, they can still get a conference championship. But right now, today, Union Pines has a stranglehold on the second spot in the Tri-County 6. You said if they went out at 8-3, and three, turning in 8-2 and two to the state, this probably means a home playoff game for this squad. Yep. That wow. is enormous. That's huge. What a great job with Coach Cox and his coaching staff. Got to tip our hats to Southern Lee staff as well. Oh, God. Coached a heck of a ball game. Absolutely. This is what high school football is all about. This is why we love conference play. Yep. You get exciting games like this that matter. The kids are involved. What a, what a ball game, Chris. Well, I knew coming in these teams were evenly matched. Usually when you feel like you've got evenly matched teams, you get let down. Yep. Not tonight. Not tonight. This this game that started slowly, that second, that first half was painful. To get through to the second half with all of the momentum swings, everything that went down, I'm honored to have been here. Won't ever forget I was here calling the game with you, Big Dog. <laughs> this has been great. Anything to add? These both teams got to recuperate. Southern Lee going to Hornet Central next week. Union Pines is one of the Western Hornet, one of the <laughs> one of the Hornet County schools. I apologize. I don't know what their schedule is, but it's on to the next week. You, you got to watch film, learn from this, and move forward. But wow, what a game! I'm so glad to be here. Thank you all for tuning in, watching with us. Hope you enjoyed it, Chris. This, how are we going to sleep tonight with such no excitement? Idea. How am I going to go no to sleep idea. tonight? I don't know. I got to be at a meeting at 8.30 in the wow. morning. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Man, oh, man, oh, man. I, I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the night. But he <laughs> can't be sleep involved. This has been amazing. This is the NFHS Game of the Week. This is why we do this. We will see you next week. I'm Krista Lambert. This is Nathan Cochran. Peace. We're out of here. Thanks for watching the Game of the Week on the NFHS Network.